It's okay if we go early, right? Yeah, 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 totally right. Absolutely. So, hi, friends. Happy, I almost said Saturday. It is not Saturday. It is not Saturday. It is not Saturday. Did you guys notice there's a little poll in the chat? Did you answer the question, yes or no? Take a guess. Did Ian fall down a flight of stairs this week? Just go ahead. Click yes or click no. Feels like, Ian, that is the letter that you send in, um, like, elementary school. Like... <laughs> I like you. Do you, Do you like, like me? me? Check yes or no. no. Yep. Yeah. So yep. we'll tell you all about that story in a little while. But Do we have to. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, we'll get to that in just a second. Yeah. But what? that's what the yes or no option is for up at the top. Yeah. Take a guess. Did he fall down the stairs? Click yes or click no. And we'll talk about that in just a few minutes. I don't think it's um, going to be that hard for people to figure out what uh, it is. <laughs> yeah. So I have got a few things. I'm going to go to just the, I'm going to turn off this alert box because it is cycling through old notifications from last week and oh, I don't know weird. why. Um, but I'm going to go to just the chat on just me. You'll have Ian on voice for just a moment. So just FYI, Ian, although you see a lovely face on your camera, nobody else is seeing your lovely okay, face. Okay, goodbye. We have not debuted your haircut yet. I we will debut it in just a moment. But you can check yourself out in the camera. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to show you guys a couple of things that I got in the mail. I think it was this week. It feels like this week, but this week has been a very long week. So um, we're going to start off with the first package I received. And this actually came to me from overseas. So we're going to go to the overhead shot and I'll give you a little looky-loo. Shut, this... shut, shut, <laughs> shut, 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 oh, everybody. Gosh. Yeah, Ian's in rare form now. <laughs> we got him ready to sing. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a copy of the Happy Notes book from Sugary Doo, and it did come with a little bonus pattern, which is in here. If you don't know, she's got a sew along that's happening, and it's going to be from this book, I believe. And I'll just kind of leaf through it really quick. Katie, the Greenland quilter, actually purchased this for me and had Irene send it over to me awesome. this is a sampler quilt that i would like to make one day i don't think i'll be doing it anytime soon but i am a fan of sugary do i have followed her youtube channel for quite a long time and i've bought her pdf copies of her books before so i'm really happy to have an actual physical book so i want to say thank you to katie for sending this my way i do plan to take this to staples and have them spiral bind it I love putting my quilting books in spiral bound because a lot of times I want to get in there and copy the paper and that makes it a lot easier. But I will say this book is lay flat. Like I haven't had to break in the binding and it's laying flat quite nicely on its own. So Katie, thank you so much for this. The oh second gosh. thing. Did I really do that? What did Sorry, you do? I just noticed I was trying to say hi neighbor to uh -huh. Kay 
But instead, my autocorrect autocorrected to "Hello, newborn K." Oh. Apparently, <laughs> sorry, K. I meant to say "Hi, neighbor," but apparently, my iPad decided to say "Hi, newborn." <laughs> no worries. All right. So the second thing that I want to show you is this. If you have been around my channel for a minute, you know that I have had this lovely little tool. It kind of hangs out inside the throat of my machine and it's got these two little bevels that are used to hold. One of them is usually my seam ripper and the other one is usually my Acorn Easy press pen. And I love this thing. It was custom made for me by the guy over at Hard Rock Wood Woodworks. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Um, apparently my dogs love it too, because <laughs> I was in here sewing, uh, couple, like a couple weeks ago and this thing fell on the floor and I didn't realize it. And Akumu got a hold of it and just chewed the ends all up. And I was like, man, that bites. Now it's literally. like, I, I, that's, that bites. Literally. <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally bites. So it looks puppy love that's right mm -hmm. i got a package in the mail from so be it quilts unexpected and i want to show you what that is look at this you guys i mean just just compare right this looks very unpolished this looks really nice and polished this is a prototype that matt also known as the first husband of quilting fallon's husband um matt made this and it's kind of awesome. So I want to show you a couple of things about it. It's got slots that are big enough. They're wider than this one and they're deeper. They're perfect for a seam ripper, a uh, easy press pen, but they're not super wide. So it doesn't take up a lot of room this way. But then there's a little tray over here that is magnetized. So if I take the stuff out, those pens aren't going anywhere. There's the magnet you can see there. I'm normally not a big fan of trays like this because I have one of those flower cups that I put my pins in but I did put them in here because I figured since I had it, why not use it? And I just put a handful, maybe a dozen pins or something, because that's really usually all you ever need is just a few pins. The other ones I kept in my flower cup, put the lid on it, and I set those away for travel. And I keep my acorn uh, pen and my seam ripper in here. I don't know if these are going to be sold. I'm thinking they are because they were a prototype. Fallon, I think, is in the chat and she can answer any questions about this item, but I'm going to tell you it feels solid. It feels very polished. I do like it, but I do have one bit of advice and I have passed this on to Fallon and her husband. While I love this little magnetic tray, I don't think this is appropriate for everybody because like I said, I actually wouldn't even use this. I just want this piece. And so being able to take this product and diversify it a little bit to make it a single slot, a double slot, with or without this little magnetic cup, I think would be absolutely genius. So I want to say thank you to Matt and Fallon for sending me this prototype, unprompted, free of charge. I love it. I've been using it. And it's funny because I've actually been doing a lot of FPP this week, working on my lion kit. And this thing has just kind of like hung out right about here on my desk as I'm doing all of my FPP stuff. And that's been game changer for me. So thank you so much for that. And that being said, we're going to move over to the collab cam. And the last thing we're going to reveal, oh, I got to do it this way, is Mr. Ian's haircut, <laughs> which if you hey. were in the room and saw what we were doing, you would be laughing because he's actually standing behind me. Yep. <laughs> yep, I am. And you know who called me today? Who called you today? Matt, he called me to talk about wood. Um, <laughs> Only Ian. I mean, it, it was, Ian he, he, hey, it was funny. I picked up the phone and it's like, hey, it's Matt. I want to talk about wood. And I was like, oh, oh. first of all, his number came through as un, like no ID, no caller ID or anything. So like I was on edge anyways because I was like, I don't know who this is. <laughs> and normally I don't answer if there's not like a caller ID or something like that. But I picked up the phone and he's like, hey, it's Matt. I want to talk about wood. And I was like, oh, hey, Matt, how are you doing? <laughs> he was quite yeah. funny. Fallon, you have a very hu funny husband. Just saying. Indeed. Indeed. I'm glad that you guys connected. Do you are you ready to tell them about what you guys connected or you want to sit on that for a minute? I'm going to sit on that for a little bit longer because I yeah. want to make sure that it actually happens and is in the works rather than spilling the beans too soon and then it not happen. So more to come. Stay tuned. <laughs> Fair enough. Stay tuned. While we have you on the big display, 
let's just go ahead and close out the poll that we started. <laughs> <laughs> so take a guess. There's a poll. Did Ian fall down the stairs this week? And Ian said he knew <laughs> that it was going to be 100 percent. <laughs> everybody was going to know. But we actually have 84 percent that say yes and 16 say no. Wow. What what happened, Ian? Oh, do we have to talk about oh, this? Oh, we have to talk uh, about this. After 184 votes. Wow, goodness gracious. Y'all really went to town on that poll. So this week, um, the first time I came to Becca's, I fell down the stairs. She went to go take a nap. Uh, <laughs> and I didn't go check on him. That's how and, you know I love him. Yeah, exactly. I was like, he'll be fine. There's no blood. Uh, she didn't even know. <laughs> like, we've told the story before. We don't need to tell it again. But it was a funny, it was a funny thing. Jason heard me. <laughs> Come to think of it, Jason's been here both. Anyways, um, so is Jason shoving you down the <laughs> stairs when I'm not home? <laughs> so uh, last time I was here in June, did fine, did perfect, no problems. Tuesday, I uh, had a lunch break from work, came upstairs to the to the uh, studio here to just get some sunlight, eat lunch, spend some time out away from my computer and and where I'm sitting at f for work and. I was, I had finished my salad. I was going to walk back down into the basement. And I don't know what happened, to be 100% honest with you. I still don't know what happened because one moment I'm standing at the top of the steps. I had literally took one step onto the first step. And then the next moment I am at the bottom of the stairs and my tailbone hurts. Wait, wait, wait. So I haven't even heard the story, guys. I just got a text message that said, guess who fell down the stairs? And there was like a gif like, ha, 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 ha. Um, it's true. Wait, it's true. so you didn't fall down like four steps. No, I fell down like all of them. Like all of them. Yeah, definitely <sighs> fell down, fell did down he, a did lot. Did Jason like get up to see if you were okay? Um, he definitely made a noise like, what was that? As Again? he did the last time. <laughs> and it was like, it's me. I'm fine. Um, yeah, I, I apparently hurt my tailbone more than I thought I did. Because, you know, there's that residual pain that happens after you like hit something or whatever. And I was like, oh, this is just the residual pain for the few minutes. No, it's it's more than that. So I I probably bruised or sprained my tailbone. Uh, I actually had a doctor's appointment today for just, I already had it scheduled pre before I even left DFW. I had a, um, a, a televisit with my doctor scheduled <laughs> and he's asking me like, how is everything? How are you doing? Anything new? And I was like, do you have any, any suggestions for, for tailbone pain? And he's like, what did you do? <laughs> Fall down the stairs. It's like... <laughs> And, he, with, and it's funny because right after it happened, I Google. I went to Dr. Google and was like, did I break my tailbone or bruise my tailbone? And all of Dr. Google and everything that I can um, say is like, like everything that I kept coming across was basically like, you can't do anything for a tailbone. You just have to let it heal itself. So I, it's fine. I'm fine. It's sore it hurts it's not fun but i'm okay it is what it is and i'll be good in a week or two i'm sure so roxanne is asking are the stairs carpeted or are they wood these They're, are these are carpeted they are carpeted they are carpeted the, the set that he fell down is carpeted uh donna said you broke your butt and i said i agree there's a big crack down the middle yep, yep. um Oh, no, you broke your butt, Ian. That's what she said. Yep. Sean wants to know, do I need to install an elevator before your next visit? <laughs> you might. You might. No, I, I, it's, I don't know. I still don't know. Like I said, I don't know what happened. One moment I was standing up, the next moment I was on my butt on the bottom step, and I don't know how it happened. It happened so fast. It just, I was gone. I, no idea. No idea. Dragonflies for Donna said it must have been, you must have been pushed by Ghost of Quilter's past. <laughs> right. <laughs> there is a cemetery just down the road. There is. There is. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Jamie said, sit on one of those donut pillows. It'll help take the pressure off. I know. I've been thinking about getting one of those, but then I, and then I think about it and I'm like, my grandmother sat on one of those. Do I like, mm, it's, it's, it's the pride issue that gets in the way and i'm like i'm not old i don't need a donut 
I want it. I want a Dunkin' Donut, but I don't want. Oh, I don't need to donut. sit on a donut. Like. C card said, no more day drinking, Ian. Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> oh gosh, Laura Lynn said, feet out from under you. Yeah, that's, that's what happened. That's it, what happened. I, I think the steps are. My feet are longer than the steps, and I, I must have, like, my heel must have fallen off or something. I don't know. <laughs> you should, <laughs> Tiffany. You absolutely should. Like, when we're here together, you should absolutely film me 24-7. If you didn't check it out, I posted it on Instagram. I came across it on Instagram. And it was funny, too, because it came up, like, a day after it happened. There was a story that I posted, and I'll try and repost it again. So after the live tonight, go check out my Instagram because I'll try and repost it. It was like, it was a, a funny video of somebody like missing that one step and he falls down from the second floor down into the basement. And it's a dummy that they like shove down the, down the stairs and it was hilarious. So oh, I'm, I'm going to try and repost that on my Instagram after the live tonight. So go check it out, you know, like 10, 11 o'clock tonight. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Amy asked if I'm left-handed. No, I'm right-handed. I'm right-handed. Yeah. Yep. All right, so what are we working on tonight? Well, we're going to continue our four-patch adventure. I'm going to go to the overhead camera for just a moment and show you what I've got here. So last week, where we left, where we last left off on our journey, yes. we had taken each a charm pack and turned that charm pack into four patches. And so what we did is we took every single square we cut them into each square into four two and a half inch squares and then we sewed them back together which will yield a four and a half inch block and last week i got super adventurous and i decided to turn those four patches into little ornaments and i did you a solid i do not have a pattern for you right now don't know if i will have one anytime soon but i did put the requirements the fabric requirements and the directions to make this exact block in the show notes down below. It'll be up to you to multiply it by however many blocks you want to make. So you have to do a little bit of math. I did a little bit of math for you. Together, we can make this quilt ha this quilt pattern happen for you. So this is what I made last week. I did get a few of them finished. And then after Friday night, I think it was Saturday or something, I went ahead and finished um, snowballing all of the corners for my four patches and I even stopped to film a little bit of this process and made a reel about it and would you know somebody left a comment on that reel this is hilarious I love this they made a comment on the reel in another language but Google translated it for me so that I could read it but basically they were like that went way too fast. You didn't give us any directions or any steps to follow. And I was like, yeah, because I did that in a live stream two hour video. <laughs> Go watch that. <laughs> oh, man. But I mean, they, they probably didn't know. So they I just know. very politely, I was like, I, I, I understand. But here's the link where all the details are. So you can go watch the live stream where I did go over it in very slow detail for the course <laughs> of about two hours. <laughs> so if you were looking to catch up on this and see what I did, go back and watch last week's live stream. It's called What Can I Make With Four Patches or Charm Squares or something like that. And I'll link to it at the end of this video and I'll also put it in the show notes down below. So if you're watching this on the replay, you can get to that easily. <laughs> Katrina says, get one of those chairs that go up and down seat belt that <laughs> seat belt that boy in yeah 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 true. so i'm gonna pick up where i left off what i need to do is trim all of those little corners on my four patches so i've got that rounded out and then press those out and then i gotta make the tops oh gosh here comes ian running around again i've got to make the tops and i'll sew those to the top of all of these i feel like i should be able to get all of my ornament blocks fully done tonight. And if I do, then I might start putting them into a setting to make a quilt. If I don't, then I, I might save that for next weekend, or maybe I'll just do it over the weekend and show you what I did next week and uh, next weekend on the live. Like, I, I want I want to show you where this is. I don't know if I'll be able to sew all of it on a live stream because I might want to get it done sooner rather than later. Yep. So there you go. Yep. Okay. Uh, we're going to go back to the collab cam so that people can enjoy your super cool fade. You've got lots of comments about that, by the I way. I know. I, I thank you all so much for the comments. I actually like didn't get a haircut for a while because I wanted to grow it out and I wanted like this. I had never been to this barber before, obviously like, 
he's in Virginia, I live in Texas. And it's a long a little, drive. He was a little confused too, because he was like, why are you here? You live in Texas. And I was like, well, I'm here for the month. And so I figured I should probably get a haircut and beard trim and stuff while I'm here. And so we had a great chat. It was a great barber, um, but he did a really, really good job. And I love it. It I love really it. Good. It's so fresh. It's so clean. I love it. I love it. I love it. My beard was getting too long. My mustache was getting too long. Everything was getting a little too long. So, yeah, fresh and clean now. So fresh and so clean. So fresh, clean. Fresh, so fresh, fresh and, clean. and so clean. All right. Um, I'm actually gonna. I think I finally cut. I know everyone. I'm not standing because I'm hurting. Uh, <laughs> I was actually because the barber took a little longer than I expected. I was cutting some of my uh, fabric, so that's why I was over here. I'm going to head back over to my machine. So if Becca wants to take my cam yep. off for a moment. You're good. We don't have to make a motion Perfect. sick. Yeah, no motion sickness for y'all. I'm going to move the camera over and continue over from at the machine. Yeah. I am separating out my tops from my blocks so that I can streamline, do some of this stuff. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so funny. Anything when a camera's turned on. He goes from like... This energy to romp right in front of the, he's, he is definitely a ham. He you're loves, lo and I, I'm the same way, yeah. so it's totally fine. Well, you're gonna you're gonna be so happy when I'm gone. You're like, finally, I can sew by myself. <laughs> no, I. So I feel like we have done a really good job of respecting each other's space. Yeah, right? absolutely. So I've had time in my sewing room alone yep. without Ian running circles around my desk. <laughs> Like, like the dogs. Kumu. Yeah, it was like a kumu and yeah. Beetlejuice. Yep. Can we tell them about your quilting adventures with the puppy? Oh. With Margot the boxer? Can we talk about that? Oh, do we have to? Oh. <laughs> oh. Um, yeah, we can tell them about that. Um, so yeah. who's going to break the bad news? Oh, why don't you start it off and we'll go from there. Okay, so Ian has finished he finished piecing his margo the boxer which is a legit kit that he has been working on diligently for months and he was determined determined to have this quilt pieced before he came here mm -hmm. excuse me so that he could quilt it on my long arm so he gets it here and i tell him look ian you do not want to quilt that top drawer. Or it, just top drawer, dude. Oh, is it? Top oh. drawer. Top drawer. Oh, there where it go. says paper. Huh? Yeah, and masking tape, uh, painter's tape's right there. Oh, perfect. Anywho. Sorry. So I said, listen, Ian, if you want to do that, that's fine. He just wanted to do matchstick quilting on it. And I said, listen, before you do that, I've got a ton of quilt tops sitting on the rack. I'll pull off one that I would be willing to sacrifice as a practice quilt. And you can just straight line quilt that. Practice your matchstick quilting. Get the technique down. Get used to the feel of the machine. And then we'll load Margo. And he said, okay. He got that thing, I think, done in like two days, right? Yep. Like just yeah, did some lines quick. on it. Walked back and forth with the machine. And he, he definitely felt comfortable with it. And then he loaded Margo the boxer and he got it what he thought was straight and he started quilting. But for the first quarter of the quilt, every couple passes or so, the thread would break. Every single, like it, it just kept happening. And we couldn't figure out why it was breaking. We changed the needle. We checked the tension. We did this. We did, we did all of the things. Yep. We even at one point took the needle out and turned it from kind of like this 530 position that we keep it in to straight six o'clock thinking that maybe I the needle was installed wrong and we needed to have it at the six o'clock position and then the thread broke even more so we put it back to the 530 position and I finally got to the point where I was like okay listen I just need a new bobbin case I need a new bobbin case so I called my handy quilter dealer which is the quilt shop that I go to in Fairfax Virginia quilter studio Hi, Kathy. <laughs> so I called and I spoke with Kathy. She's the owner. And I said, listen, here's the deal. This is what's happening. Do you have a bobbin case? And she said, I do. I have just one left. I'll hold it for you for a couple of days. It was Friday, I think, when I called her. She said, but if you don't pick it up by Monday morning, I'm putting it back on the floor. And I said, totally fine. She said, but before you come and you spend all that money in the bobbin case, 
try these things. And this is why I love Kathy because she gave me a whole list of things to go through. And I did all those things. I had already done all those things except for one. She wanted me to take the tension discs and pull them apart and blow into it, clean into it and get the lint out. Cause she said with where the thread was breaking, it was a top thread and it was breaking around where the tension disc was that it was likely being caused by gunk in the tension discs. Cause I never cleaned that out ever. So I was like, okay, I'm skeptical about it, but I'm going to try it. So I went over Ian pulled them apart for me and I have this electric gun that blows air. It's not condensed air. It's just an electric thing. And I blew it in there and like three giant fuzzballs came out mm -hmm. yep. and the thread did not break after that. So Ian keeps going. Now, now mind you, the needle's back in the 530 position and the tension is looking great from the top. And it, it looked like it was looking great from the bottom too. And Ian's doing his own thing. Mm -hmm. I'm at work during the office during his lunch break. He's coming up here doing a few passes and I come home from work and he says, you want to pick up from here? I say I'm going to have to rip everything. And she, Becca's like, what are you talking about? And I point her over to the long arm. I had advanced the quilt and on the back of it, um, I it, it was a complete like bird's nest. There was a bird's nest. There was all kinds of horrible looking things not show worthy quilting at all and so i realized that at some point i think when we moved the needle into the six o'clock position it it messed things up and like i'm having to unquilt everything i'm literally having to go through and rip the entire quilt of its quilting so yes. yeah it was <sighs> A humbling experience. It was. It was. And yeah, I'm I'm hoping it's salvageable and I can make it work, but I definitely was like very sad and you know, Becca was like <laughs> did you start crying? And I was like, no, I didn't. I, I said a bad word or two, but <laughs> I, I didn't, I didn't cuss at it or anything and, or I didn't uh, cry, but it definitely was um, kind of sad. So, so now we know in the middle of a quilt to be more diligent yep. about checking the back tension yep. over a good piece of scrap fabric before we just keep quilting. Number one. Yep. Number two, crawling under the long arm, taking a picture of the long, under the long arm, using a mirror. None of those things work. The best way, and we, we've decided, I've decided, the best way to check that tension on the backside is just to advance the quilt so that you can see the tension yeah. on the backside of the quilt from the back of the long arm where the lighting's good. Yeah. And then if it looks good, you can pull it back out and continue your job. So yep. um, we will definitely be doing that. We also learned, like this is a big learning opportunity, that fuzz gets in the tension disc and causes you to break thread. Yep. So we know all of those things now. We are better prepared to try Margot again. Yeah. But until then, uh, gosh, he was almost, I'm looking at the quilt now, you were almost halfway. I done. was almost halfway. Yeah, I was almost halfway. Am yeah. I back on you visual are. again? They okay. Can see you. Um, yeah, I was about, I was almost halfway. I like Fallon's comment of, um, <laughs> that uh where'd it go uh and so you threw yourself down the stairs <laughs> yeah. no it I actually like think I, so. I think it happened the day after i think i discovered that the day after i fell down the stairs but it was definitely i definitely called my quilter and was like can i just vent for a moment can i just can i just vent to you and she's like yeah sure what's up but i was on FaceTime with her. And so I was like, oh, I fell down the stairs and then I did this. And then I advanced the quilt and I showed her what was going on. And she went, oh, Ian, oh, Ian, oh no. Yeah, so it is it is it is disappointing, but it will be okay. It will be okay. I'm gonna, I don't know if I'm gonna tackle it again while I'm here. I, I, I don't know if I'm gonna take it back home and store it in a box for six months. <laughs> And come hand back it to off it. to your long armor and be I, like, I tried. I, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to take it step by step. And right now that step is to unquilt all the quilting that I put into it and yep. it'll be all right. 
Switching gears a little bit, there is a question in the chat about you and Zoe. Jojo says, your family accepts Ian? Is he a little out there for Zoe? Because she seems so shy. Nope. She's shy to the camera. Yeah. But she is, once she, no, no, she's come out of her shell she a lot has. in the past couple years. She really years. has, yeah. And she's, uh, she is not so shy anymore. She's she's still shy. Mm -hmm. She she is an introvert. She is a little shy, but she is learning how to interact with people a little bit more. So um, not as shy as she once was. Hope that answers your question. She she also finds me quite funny in the in the only way that Zoe can <laughs> show that she thinks somebody is funny. Like she she thinks I'm funny, and yeah. I'm good with that. Yep. Yep. Oh, you can take that. Okay. I've got another one over here. Okay. I'll take this one because I've already yet again made a Might mistake. need a new seam ripper by the time you leave. Yeah, you probably will. <laughs> you probably will. Um, Donna says, take it home and uh, have a picking party, Ian. It is flexible. I, I'm going to get it completely undone while I'm here. Again, I just haven't quite decided if I'm going to um, start again here or if I'm going to like put it sometimes you need to take projects and put them down for a bit mm -hmm. this may be one of them that i just need to take a step back for a little bit yep um some but some fun news i so if you've been on my channel um you know that i sometimes sew with sylvia which is my uh 1948 uh singer featherweight machine i got a text message from my friend who gave her to me she found the tray with accessories so there are different feet there are bobbins there's all sorts of different things and there's a tray that goes in the top of the case she found all that so wow. she let me know uh that when i get back in town that she wants to meet up and give that to me so i'm super excited to to get that reunite yeah and it feels so good that is exactly what i was thinking when i when she sent that i was like oh i can reunite them <laughs> and laura lynn said some projects just need a timeout yeah 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 <laughs> some projects they just sometimes need a timeout and this is one that needs a timeout i think katrina said i am sorry ian that would be heartbreaking yeah, it was it was it was hard when I made that discovery, for sure. It was definitely a oh boy moment. We have been having seam ripping parties where I have offered to rip and he's like, nope, I'm good. I got it. And so he's been doing most of it, but I have been keeping him company in yep. here working on other things. And we turn on a Harry Potter movie. Yep. We watch the whole Harry Potter movie. I sew something and he unsews something. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that is literally what's been happening. She will sew something, I unsew it. We watch Harry Potter. I haven't watched the first, we watched the first and second ones. Yep. Um, and I haven't, you know, I have to say, I haven't watched those in many, many years. So it's it, it was actually a good therapy to sit there and watch the Harry Potter movies. Why does the machine keep coming unthreaded? <laughs> it's okay. just, just one of those things. Um, but no, it's been good to sit here and watch the Harry Potter movies. Absolutely. Good night, Kelly. She said, I'm going to head out. See y'all around. Bye, Kelly. See you later. Holly Savage says, good evening, Becca and Ian and everyone else too. I'm a little late, but I am catching up on 2X speed for the first 20 minutes. Great. Whee! So I sound like a chipmunk when I say hi to you, Holly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hi, Holly. <laughs> By the way, Laura Lynn said she loves your shirt. And I got to tell you, you that she ordered one of those for her son and her husband. So oh, they, all, they both have one now, too. That's awesome. Yeah, Somebody else in your comments, they saw my, I have a sewing machine themed um, one as well. That's like a rainbow, but it's, it's weird. It's kind of like. Uh, uh, like an acid trip or something like that, I think. Um, it's like glitchy. Yeah, yeah, glitchy. That's a good way to describe it. Um, and uh, somebody else asked about it in your comments. If you see, this is the Boys So Too shirt. Um, and the one that I wore last week, uh, those shirts are available from the We So Too website. Uh, if you look up, and I tried Googling them and you can find them, but for some reason you can't find their shop that way. If you search We So Too or Boys So Too on Instagram, on their page, they have the link that goes to their website and you can purchase shirts. That's also the shirt I sent it to Becca. They make a shirt that uses her Juki machine 
uh, on it, and it's got like flames, and it's got all sorts of fun stuff on it. <laughs> I immediately thought of Tiffany when you sent that to me. I was yeah. like, Tiff needs a shirt. Tiffany does need that shirt. Hers probably does burst into flames with how fast she sews sometimes. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm trying to keep up with the chat. Uh, it's hard sometimes. I, Sean is asking, is it for sale? I need one. I don't know what you're referencing, Sean, but if you if, if it's for me, just clarify what you're asking about. Because you know how you're 30 seconds behind me, so you're replying to something and I don't even remember what was said. It's probably the shirt. Oh, it's probably the shirt. The shirt oh, I'm the guy sew, the yeah, boy sew too. The boy sew too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I Sean, betcha. I will send you a link. Uh, I'll text it to you later. I'll send you a link directly to the shop. Susan asks, Ian, how much longer will you be at Becca's? That's for me to know and y'all to find oh, out. Oh, he's so secretive. I, I don't know. even know when he's leaving. He's, he's just going to wake up one day and be like, take me to the airport, woman. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have a car. I can go to the airport myself. <laughs> Goodbye, woman. Whee! And no, then he'll fall on the way out to the driveway. very true. Uh, no, there is a specified date, but I'm just not revealing it. You'll just have to stay tuned and find out. I should do that on my channel. I should have like an opening of where is Ian today? So there you go. Every day, every day, just post yep. a reel. Yep. And just send a picture. And then one day the reel will be an airplane. Right. <laughs> exactly. exactly. He's still got a bit of time here. Maybe Not like more. five hours, maybe like 12, maybe like 112. You don't know. 96, 94. 125 billion i don't know yeah <laughs> long enough to sit out this live stream yep yep where in the world is ian san diego <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> I, you know what's really funny is i uh ran across so uh i loved where in the world is carmen san diego as uh, as a kid um and i had totally forgotten about where in time is Carmen San Diego. Oh, was that a thing? It was a thing. It was a television show after Where in the World was Carmen San Diego. Uh, and I totally forgot about it until I watched like this YouTube documentary on Where in the World is Carmen San Diego. And it was so fun. I totally forgotten about it. Goodness gracious, golly gee whiz darn. Yep. So next week when we come to you, we will be coming to you live on Black Friday. Oh, 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 oh. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I do that. <laughs> I know why you do that. Well, I know you do. TikTok. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That stupid creator. Like, she's stuck in she my head forever. Also, hilarious. wait a minute. Okay. Hold up. Hold up. Put so a I found... little mm in it. <laughs> first of all, first, okay. Hold up two times. First off, my sister's oldest, when they were a child, was a cheerleader. And like at seven years old, one of their cheers was, um, hold up, wait a minute. And then they put, they're like, hold up, wait a minute. And then when they got their hands on their hip, they totally gyrated and put, and said, put a little mm in it. And I was like, mm -mm -mm. your seven year old did what it was directed to do what by the adults <laughs> like oh, that was good anyway so that's hold up number one hold up number two i forgot what i was gonna say oh no i killed it my bad oh what was it what were we talking about before then uh where in the world is carmen san diego yeah i don't know okay i lost it um dragonflies for donna says ian are you still thinking about moving to the east coast even with the stairs and cool <laughs> things happening? yes it is still a possibility i'm still checking things out i don't know where i'm gonna land um that was something that i was actually talking about with oh we were talking about tiktok oh yes okay i remember keep is. going go. and then i'll no no go go it. go run 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 with well, it oddly speaking of running oh okay so i found this guy on instagram yeah and he's hilarious. He's probably like young 30s. Okay. Maybe late 20s. Married and has a kid. But I think he's a teacher. I'm, I'm guessing. Right. He works with teenagers somehow. 
Okay. And so he keeps doing these videos of like teenagers be like whatever, right? Right. So like teenagers be like when it when it when a friend comes over right. teenagers be like when you pick them up from school and he just uses like all the gen z slang yes and it is hilarious and so all week i've been going around like with this guy in my head so like one of them is like uh what is it that's hands bra <laughs> like what, what does that even mean pop off bra oh my god <laughs> uh, what what like um Oh, wait. Wasn't that Lance? Would you? Wasn't that Lance? No, Dennis? no, no, no. But he, Lance did do one like yeah, that. But yeah. no, this guy like does the whole thing. Yeah. Like he's like, you're doing too much, bro. I'm built different. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what? I don't even know what these are. Like, it. I I don't understand them, but I literally laugh. And the way he runs, this is hilarious. The way he makes like simulates his teenager running. Yeah. Look, he puts his hands behind him. Oh. Like this. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> Oh, that that was the other one. My gotcha. guy. My guy. Like, yep. That's hands, my guy. <laughs> like, um, I'm catching up oh. with the chat. There's so uh, there's several people that have been talking about Carmen San Diego and like where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Where in time is Carmen San Diego? It was there's after my time. So That's many where different it was. things. Uh, interestingly enough, I when I worked at the library, we I always came up with some fun programming in the. Um, I literally was like, that machine doesn't sound right, and then I was like, oh, bobbin, it's bobbin, I'm doing a bobbin. <laughs> um, I always came up with fun, like things to celebrate, and one of them was Carmen San Diego Day. So I actually wrote the company that. Um, not produced, but like not manufactured, but uh, distributed Carmen San Diego. And I said, I would love to um, have a Carmen San Diego day in in my space and I want to show where in the where in time is Carmen San Diego. And uh, they actually gave me the rights for a day to do it. So it was a it was a cool little like, thing to like make it all happen and it i was worried it wasn't going to happen and then they were like if basically they were wanting like us to sign this big huge long contract and i was like uh i sent it to my boss and and she was like uh we're gonna have to figure this out and like it was kind of hectic there for a moment and then we and then somebody else who was copied on that email wrote in and was like no 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 don't worry about it that's it's fine you can show it for a day no contract needed like you have permission here's your permission show it i was like okay cool so it was it was a fun little thing so carmen san diego is like kind of special to me because i grew up on where in the world was carmen san diego and then getting the permission to actually show that in in the library was pretty fun i am gonna i'm trying to use fallon's trim lock rulers because the fabric does not move underneath it to trim these half square tri or these little stitch and flips. The beauty about a stitch and flip is it really doesn't need to be accurate. It just needs to be cut. Yep. So I don't have to worry about whether this is big enough or not. I just have to make sure that there's enough clearance. So I was, I was literally sitting here like there's gotta be a faster way to trim these. And then I was like, oh, the trim locks. And even though there's no markings on it, it works because you don't have to have an accurate seam allowance. Like, or, I mean, you don't have to have an accurate distance. You yeah. just need to have a trim. Yeah. So thank you, Fallon. This is working a lot faster. Katrina, <laughs> Katrina says, uh, that's a joke between me and my son. Flames! And all I could think of were, the flames, I feel the flames on my face. Yeah, see, in my head... From? I think the plane, boss, the plane. <laughs> like totally different generations. Yep. <laughs> Wait, are you a millennial? Place. Yeah, I am okay. a millennial. Yep. I'm not. I am. I'm not a millennial. I'm an old millennial or a young. Wait. I think you're. Gen I'm a young Gen Z or an old millennial. No, no, I'm no, kind of not, in that bun. No, you're no, not Gen, Gen Z. X. Yeah, Gen, Gen X. X. Yeah, I was like, you're not Gen Z. Gen Z is after me. <laughs> Zoe is Gen Z. Yes, yes. Zoe is Gen Z. Um, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go up to her later and be like. What's up, my guy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think That's you're hands, Gen bro. X. That's hands, bro. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I definitely. I feel the flames on my face. <laughs> Gosh, the flames, the plane, boss, the plane. 
Oh, oh no good. way to new way to trim it. That's right. That's right. Always find those shortcuts. Anything. Absolutely. Chilla Pink said this on one of Fat Quarter Shop's uh, videos when she was teaching EPP. You're not looking for something that's going to take your entire project in half. You're never going to be able to find that thing. What you're doing for is looking for ways to shave little amounts of time off from lots of different steps to make it faster. Yep. <laughs> Uh, the guy who sews says Mrs. White, or yeah, Mrs. White on Clue. Yes, yes, you are correct. Uh, love this. Oh, love that movie. Love that movie. I haven't Such seen it in a while, though. We should watch that. Okay. While I'm picking Done. threads, <laughs> we, we can. Next movie. Right? Next one Next up. Next movie. That's the one. Mm -hmm. It was Colonel Mustard in the library with the wrench. Da 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 da. I am <laughs> your singing telegram. <laughs> Bang. <laughs> oh man becca still has an active discount code in fallon's shop everyone so oh, yeah yeah close. yeah it is uh so becca with a capital s and a capital b everything else is lowercase and there is no spaces and it is only good until the 17th Ooh, which is today it was a temporary code oh, it is today isn't it yeah it is today yeah. it is today it is today, today. gotta Got to get that 10% off. Thank you for reminding us all, Fallon. Yeah. Fallon, your husband really scared me when he called. With that no caller ID, I was like, who is calling me? Ba -dum -ba -dum -bum -bum. It's time to start the music. Dun, dun, it's dun, time dun, to dun, dim dun, the dun. lights. It's time to bum, 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 the Muppet Show tonight. Boop. <laughs> Who's your favorite Muppet? Oh, the, the Swedish Chef. 100%, right? 100% like, Swedish it's Chef. It's either, well, okay, so I like them all for different reasons. Sure. But, bork de bork de bork de bork de bork de bork. And also Fonzie Bear, because, come on. Yeah, hello. I can see that too. I can definitely see that too. Hello, Judy. Lots of people are sounding off that they are baby boomers in the chat. Mom is a baby boomer too. She says, Go baby boomers. <laughs> the quilting compound says I'm Gen X and I've never heard of Car Carmen San Diego. It was the best. Same. Like I definitely remember watching that. Uh, it came on after news and before dinner for me. And that was like a thing that we would watch every single day on weekdays. And it was the best. I love it. I missed yeah. that show. It was really good. Yeah, I d I'm just saying, I'm just saying. No. Just I'm sorry, That's but Carmen San Diego ain't got nothing on Mr. Dress Up. I oh, love okay. Mr. Dress Up, or Reading Rainbow. Reading Rainbow. Reading Rainbow. Reading Rainbow. Absolutely. I got to hear him speak one time. I was in an education conference LeVar and I got Burton. to hear him. Yeah, Lavar and Burton. I got to hear. Wasn't he hear him. Star Trek? Too? Yes, he was. He was indeed. Yep. Data. Not no, he no. wasn't Data, no, but no. I like I just that just came in my head. So yeah, sorry. I was like, no, no, not Data, not Data. Nope. What else? What else? Swedish Chef. Donna agrees burk, with de burk, us on de burk, de Swedish de Chef. Swedish Chef. I feel like the Swedish Chef was the chef in The Little Mermaid. Just saying. Uh, do you, they're okay. First you purt, I mean to purt. <laughs> no? No. Okay. Not in Little Mermaid. No, I know, but like I think they could have been distant cousins. Yeah. It's time to start the music. It's time to light the lights. Jason's favorite was Kermit the Frog. Kermit's great. I will never, never not, um, I don't know. <laughs> Pastry Queen's Farm Adventure says, hello. Hope everyone is having a good night. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. What did I do? Did I do this wrong? I don't know. And so I made my own design. I, it's probably an actual design somewhere, but I made my own design and I just. Oh, you're lagging. Oh. oh. Now, yeah, you're a little, it's catching up now. Okay, all right. But you cool. were starting to get a little stuttered. Woo! Ah, <sighs> Grover. Oh, oh Grover was Grover. from Sesame Street. That yeah. was good. Yeah, I love Sesame Street. But Rum uh, Oscar the Grouch was my favorite, but I also had a soft spot for Snuffleupagus. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. 
Amy's reminding everybody that LeVar Burton starred in Roots. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. Ms. Topaz, Lori says, I remember Captain Kangaroo. Oh, yeah. Candace wants to know if anybody wants to talk about Howdy Doody. Oh. Go ahead. <laughs> I can't help you there, though. <laughs> Why is your Mom probably could. He keeps coming on thread. Debbie Dunn says, headed out. I'll rewatch later. Have a great night. Hello. Bye. See you later. Yep. Mom's confirming as a small child, Oscar the Grouch was her favorite. Very nice. Oh, Inspector Gadget. Yes. Oh, Zoe plays that all the time. Inspector Gadget. Do, 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 no, it's Pink Panther she plays. Do, 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 I went as Inspector Gadget for Halloween one year. Did you really? Yep, I sure did. My mom bought me a trench coat uh, and hilarious. the hat. And we, we, we bought a fake hand and duct taped it to a slinky. And so I kept my real hand inside the, the coat and then stuck the slinky with the duct tape hand outside of the, on the sleeve. So it looked like his arm was like, Woo. Uh, Pastry Queen was asking a question and it went too fast. Oh, Fallon mentioned on her live that you were going to show us something new. Yes, it is this lovely thing. So I will give you a close up of it. We'll go to the overhead view so that you can see what it is in case you guys weren't here earlier. Goodbye. <laughs> Fallon's husband sent me this lovely tray. It's got two slots to hold different sewing notions. You can put a pen here, whatever, and then a magnetic little tray to hold pins. And this is absolutely lovely and came at a wonderful time because my dog chewed up my other one and I love that notion. That's one of my favorite things in my room. Rebecca says, Animal the drummer. And guess what? I can do an animal impression. Are you ready? <clears throat> oh, God. Animal! Animal! Oh, my God. You're welcome. You are crazy. <laughs> I remember Bozo the Clown. Yep. I, I had remember a, Bozo, I had the a Bozo the Clown. I had a Bozo the Clown VHS. I did not like clowns, though. And I blame my dad for letting me watch Poltergeist. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why I didn't like clowns. That's fair. Like five or six years old watching Poltergeist. Nah, no, never yeah. again. So you want to know, I don't know if I ever told you this story, Ian. Um, I don't know either. Oh, this is so funny. So Jason was a teenager, like a young teen, like a preteen, right? And he's got, I'm just going to press these. I don't, I'm not going to start cheap piece. I'll. I just want to get through this. Okay. Um, so anyway, they had just moved into this house uh -huh. that had a finished basement. Yeah. And so his parents let him have the basement as his bedroom. Right. So he's sitting on the bed and they had a cat. And I guess they're watching, he's, he's watching Poltergeist. Yeah. And right about the time where the the clown came on screen and like jumps out. Yes. He had like this dr drive to like check under his bed. He kept psyching himself up. He's like, there's nothing there. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. Right. But he felt like he had to check. So he leans over the edge of the bed and lifts the blanket up to look. And the cat's paw came. Oh my God. He gosh. said he jumped so far back. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this actually is laying flatter when I put the easy press pen on it. So we're going to go back and do it. But yeah, he was, he was, uh, <laughs> he was scared. I think he pooped his pants. Oops. <laughs> Oopsies. Oh gosh. I don't know what I would have done. Like I, I would have probably lost five this, years off my life. This is why I don't watch scary movies. Right? I did watch Megan. That was not a scary that movie. Was not a, it was not a scary movie, no, but it, I, see, I was, I've been so scared to watch scary movies that even like Megan, I was like, I don't know if I want to watch it. It might be scary. And then I watched it. It was hysterical. I actually, I loved it because it was horrible. It was horrible. It was a horrible, horrible movie. It was not movie. a good horror movie. The, the one good moment in it was when she started doing the like the dance, crazy dance the, i just yes, wanted to watch her yep, dance i yep. was like I, okay that that yep. that was the only good scene in the whole movie yes absolutely. the whole reason watching the movie is to see her dance down the hallway and then it only lasted as long as the preview i, I know like, Where's the, rest of the dance i, I want to see the dance i'm here for the dance yep. megan okay yep. <laughs> but then halloween horror nights in florida 
they had the dancing Megans. They did a whole what? dance routine. Yeah, they had a whole dance routine and all. It, I'll show it to you after we get off live. Okay. It was great. It was way better than that. It was a full like five minutes or something. And it was maybe not five minutes, but it was longer than that. And it was mm. good. It was really, really good. I always kick myself when I don't use the easy press pen from the start, right? Like it's a little bit more fuss and muss, but I do get flatter seams when I use it. And I was trying to save a step, but... I didn't get to starch this because I used a charm pack. I yeah. didn't starch the fabric beforehand. Yep. So I'm not getting as flat of seams when I press as I would have gotten had the fabric been starched before I cut. So that is, this is the perfect use for an easy press pen. It's applying starch to the seams to get those nice and flat on fabric that I could not starch before I cut because mm -hmm. it was a pre-cut. Yep. Danelle said, uh, when I was young and watched scary movies, I had to watch a cartoon before I go, could go to bed to calm my nerves down. That's fair. That is fair. I, I, I love haunted houses. I love fright fest and spooky and all that kind of stuff. Movies, I can't, I can't do them. I can't do scary movies. Okay. Good I don't know, know why. It just, everyone's always like, but, but, but like haunted houses are worse than movies. And I'm like, I don't know. Um, let's see. Trek 15 says, I have never used starch in the 30 years of quilting. Is it worth it? Becca has gotten me doing best press and I, I can't believe I haven't been doing it before. Like it's, it makes the blocks and every, and fabric just that much nicer. I did not use best press on any of this and I kind of hate it. <laughs> I kind of hate that. Well, I there is, there is an Acorn Easy Press Pen over there for there you. There is, and I at this point I'm just so lazy that I'm like, man, it's fine. <laughs> man, it's fine. Janet wants to know, Becca, where did you get that wood notion? This was a prototype that Matt Fallon's husband sent to me, and I believe they will have in their shop within the next couple of weeks. So you'll want to stay tuned for that. Mm -hmm. He has been busy doing little things, making little different prototypes and randomly sending them out to people to try out and review. He never said anything to me. Well, just kidding. I'm kidding, Fall Fallon. I'm kidding. Like, you don't know. I'm kidding. You're I'm also kidding. here. That is true. Anywho. <laughs> um, so he's, he sent out, he sent this out to me. I didn't even know it was coming, but the timing on it couldn't have been perfect. So highly recommend. So here is what I'm working on. I grabbed, oh, it's actually looking pretty good. Look at that. Mm -hmm. So I've got my four patches and then I'm pairing it up with some black grunge fabric and then some of this. Um, it actually turned out to be tulip pink. She, uh, Becca didn't realize that she had tulip pink hiding on her shelf and I found it accidentally. Ask I, him how much of it he left for me. I left her one strip. Um... <laughs> So, but yeah, I have some of this, uh, some of these like sprinkles in there and this, I think I this is, look, I mean, look how good this looks so far. I love it. So I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to alternate back and forth between the black grunge and the four patches. So on the next row, there will be five grunge patches and four, uh, four patches. And I'll just keep going back and forth between, between those. I will say for those that were in the chat asking about the starch, I used Best Press. And the reason why I do is because it adds some body to my quilt blocks, which makes it a little bit easier to maneuver. It takes just a little bit of the stretch out so I don't have to worry about those bias edges as much. And I find that when I use Best Press or starch, I get less fraying on my cotton fabrics. All I could think about when you said body is body yaddy 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 yaddy. I don't know what that is, but okay. <laughs> and Karen said friends share fabric. It's LOL. True. They did. She she does. She and does best friends them. steal fabric. It's true. But it's not it's stealing. True. If it's Tula, if it's, it's a th death sentence. Yeah. <laughs> teasing, teasing, totally teasing. Are we going to tell them what we're doing? On Black Friday. Oh yeah, so we were gonna we were gonna mention this, and I totally forgot. We started talking talking about Black Friday, but I, apparently I have ADD brain. <laughs> so, Black Friday um, next week, Thanksgiving. Can you believe it already? 
So I, we're gonna. I, where did the time go? I don't know. It feels like it was just Zoe's birthday, Seriously. and now here it is. We're gonna put our tree up this weekend, so or next weekend. Right. So there you go. Uh, we're gonna do Thanksgiving as we normally will. Well, we're hosting, which I'm really excited about. We've got to plan the menu and do all the things, and then I took Wednesday and Friday off of next week, and. <laughs> Don't drink the best press. Got it. Donna sent me a text and said, no, Becca, don't drink the best press. Oh, oh my. <laughs> what? Did it look like I was going to? <laughs> uh, anyway, so Friday, Black Friday, Ian has not, he's only been to one quilt shop in the area. It's the one that I usually go to. We, we went to, well, the last time I was here, we also went to Susie's. Oh, yeah, Susie's. Yeah. Okay, so I have two that I go to. Yeah. I like Susie's. They have a lot of good boutiques. They're in Manassas. Um, I like Berger's for the machine because Raymond is my guy with my domestic machines. Uh, unfortunately, he will not service my handy quilter, so I do take my handy quilter to Kathy at the Quilter Studio in Fairfax. So those are like the three shops that I kind of hit. But there are plenty of other quilt shops in the area, some of which I have never been to. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to do a great big DC quilt shop hop. We've got quilt shops in Maryland, quilt shops in Virginia. And actually none in DC because I don't believe there are any inside of the district. So we'll be going to some quilt shops in the greater DC area on Friday. I do not think we will get down to any of the ones in Harrisonburg. Maybe we will. Who knows? We'll have to see how we plot it out yeah. because we want to be back here for the live. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Because I think I think everybody would appreciate if we were we were live. Although, wouldn't it be fun if we did it from the car? Hey, everyone, we're driving <laughs> in the dark because <laughs> it gets dark at like four o'clock. <laughs> it does. Golden it does. hour happens like four four thirty, and I'm like, what the heck? That's something different from Texas because it, in Texas it it gets a little darker a little later. So I'm having to get used to like the little bit of a darker here <laughs> Fallon said my husband is going to hate that he missed this chat <laughs> i'm sure we've we've already talked about him and his wood and we've talked yeah he's so going to miss i feel like Fallon that he and i would get along really well and y'all are just down the road from me when mm -hmm. i'm at home so maybe i should make a road trip down there somebody said you need to uh you need to get me to come visit texas absolutely Becca does need to come visit me in Texas. Donna wants dragonflies for Donna says, how is the panda quilt coming along? That's a great question. It's coming <laughs> a little slower than anticipated, but I am making progress on it. So I'm kind of trading out between three different projects right now. I'm working on my legit line. I'm working on this and I'm working on the panda quilt. And those are kind of the three that I'm juggling. And speaking of panda, that is a good segue for a plug for Sean from the guy who sews. The Saturday after Thanksgiving, Ian and I both will join him for Brecky with Sean on yep. his channel at 8 a.m. Eastern time. Wait, and I, eight? Yeah, 8 a.m. I a agreed to 8 a.m.? Mm -hmm. What was I thinking? I mean, I love you, Sean! <laughs> so, well, that's okay. No, if I'm you kidding. come walking in no, halfway I'm through, kidding. I will be there. Right. <laughs> um, no. But I will be working on my pandas on his channel. So if you want to see where I am in my progress... Definitely follow me on Instagram because I put all my behind the scenes stuff on Instagram, but also make sure to join Sean, Ian and I, Brecky with Sean on Saturday after Thanksgiving. Yep. I'll be there. I promise. I was joking, Sean. I promise. Yep. Uh, somebody said that they will be in, they will be in the Woodbridge, Virginia area, which is near where I live. I live in Prince William County. I will put that out there, but I don't want to give my exact location away. They'll be in Woodbridge, Virginia on December 30th. If you would like to meet for a cup of coffee, send me an email. I'd be happy to meet you at a Starbucks. We could have a cup of coffee. Holly says, yay, all cut up. No more squirrels. Welcome to real time, Holly. <laughs> Soap and Girl said, yeah, but don't come to Texas in, in the summer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not a the, problem. The 110 that we had over this summer. I, it was weird because it was hot last summer. But this summer just, I don't remember it being that hot as a kid and it was just miserable it just kept being hot 
hot, 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 hot. I'm feeling hot, hot, yep, hot. Exactly. Um, but yeah. And then on Tuesday, so if anybody is in DC on Tuesday and you want to meet up maybe, uh, let me know because I'm going to be in DC again on Tuesday. Specifically, do you want to tell them which museum you're yeah, thinking about going I'm to? Yeah, I'm going to go check out the um, Air and Space Museum in DC. I didn't, <laughs> I think I talked about this last time of tomorrow I'm going to the Air and Space Museum in DC. Well, I got there only to find out that you needed a reservation to get in. I didn't realize that because all the other museums in the Smithsonian don't need a reservation, but I needed one for this. And unfortunately they were completely given out for that day. So I didn't get the chance to go uh, on last Saturday, but Tuesday I'm going back and I'm gonna, I have already reserved my spot. I have my tickets all ready to go. I will be going to the air and space on Tuesday. Cool. And awesome. I'll take the Metro in again. Which He's so excited about the Metro. I like the Metro. I wish we had as great of public transportation. I mean, back it home. is reliable. Yes. It is very reliable it and is. it's not filthy like some no, cities. It's really clean, it's actually. Not bad, but it's also the Metro. It is. It <laughs> is. Like, I would rather be in my car. Thank yeah, you. Well, <laughs> I can understand. But as someone who used to take public transportation between Fort Worth and Dallas, I I was okay. It was not bad. I've seen much much worse, and I was yeah. like, I I I don't know what all the fuss is about because this is actually pretty okay. Well, there are certain lines on the sure. metro in DC that sure. you just you avoid those. I I can understand. If that. you're a local, you know, no, that's not the line that. you want to be on, and the line that you were on was not the one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, my, my the line I was on was good. Although it's very interesting, I didn't realize like the metro has those underground stations that have the curved mm -hmm. walls and like i didn't realize that i had seen those before when i watched like sunday morning or something like that and mm -hmm. i was like oh my gosh i didn't realize i was going into the stations that i've seen on on tv before yep Let's see what do we got going on in the chat uh vr says becca i have been trying to work on that diamond block that we emailed about it's not working out very well send me an email and i'll see if i can help you out brenda at the beach says i hate to take my jeep into dc metro all the way metro is great i have a metro card now how weird. He's so it's proud weird. of that. It's weird to say that. It's a digital one. It's all digital. He's I don't so have a physical proud. card. I do. I don't. We don't have cards like that back home either. That's the thing. Is like it's 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 so technology advanced. Ask me if I have a metro card. No, I lost it a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> I quit taking the metro after Zoe was born. It's been a, oh, wow. a decade. <laughs> Gosh, it's been a decade. It has. It has. I mean, I have, we have access to cars if I'm in, if I'm at work in D, if I'm at work outside of DC, we have access to cars that we can take into DC and I don't have to pay the gas. I don't have to pay for parking and I don't have to pay tolls to get in. So that, that gets me into DC. And if I'm in DC and have to go from one location to the other, we have a car that I can drive to the other building and park in the other building and not have to like, or the other building, like there's more than one, but you get what I'm saying. So I don't have to take the Metro if I don't want yeah. to. Yeah. So I just, I've just gotten really used to That's not. Fair. That's very fair. I also am amazed because the Metro runs like every 10 minutes and our public transportation runs between Fort Worth and Dallas, the train that I would take would run sometimes like once an hour. Oh, did we lose me? No, you're still here. Okay, good. Uh, I need to plug my phone in because it's gonna die. Maybe that's why you were starting to freeze a little bit. Maybe that's why. <laughs> Fallon says Texas hasn't met with technology yet. It's true. It's true. Good night, Jean. Good night, Jean. Say good night, Grace. Good night, Casey. Grace. Tracy H says public transportation around here is catching your neighbor, going to the store and riding with them. <laughs> very true. That sounds very much. Well, that's like kind that's... of what we did. Like we moved from Arlington to Prince William County and in Arlington, it was bus Metro walk and then maybe drive. And I knew a lot of people that lived in Arlington that didn't have a car at all because it was all public transportation. Yep. And out here that it's like, uh, it's the exact opposite, just yeah. like you would expect in the suburbs. Yeah. If you don't have a car, you're not getting anywhere. 
Yep. I do miss London and being able to jump on the tube and be anywhere within London in about 30 minutes. It's really amazing. Never been. I want to go. It's amazing. Linda Frederick says, we will drive from Woodbridge, Virginia into Arlington, park our car at my niece's and then Uber into DC. There you go. I definitely used to be that house in Arlington that gave parking for people to do that exact thing. Um, Becca, what size are the white corner fabrics on your pattern? It is, they are one and a half by one and a half inches, and all of the measurements are in the description box of this video. <sighs> Becca, you sound like my dad. He will drive into DC anytime. Yep, I will. I'm not afraid. Like, because I've worked, like, we moved here. I, I moved here in 2008. Yes, I moved here in 2008. And I took the train for the first couple of years, but I had so many out of town guests that would come that I would have to drive them in because they wanted to do the sightseeing and they wanted to do this. They wanted to do that. We would usually drive into a Metro and take the Metro in, but then it just started getting to be a hassle. And so I got, I just got comfortable with driving in DC and it's, it doesn't bother me at all. Like it's, it's, I'm used to it, so I know what to expect. Chaos. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't that's, yep. Mm -hmm. I've been very amazed by the drivers. Not necessarily here, more of like Providence, Rhode Island, and Salem, Massachusetts. Like, sometimes I'm, I'm there and I'm like, holy cow, these drivers are worse than Dallas. And I thought Dallas was pretty bad. It hasn't Good been night, too bad Steph. down here. Stephanie's <laughs> headed out for the evening. Good night. Good night, Steph. It's Oops. time to start the music. It's time to light the lights. I don't have public transportation here, but you might be able to borrow a neighbor's tractor. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like West Texas, to be honest. Right. Um, I need another um, grunge block. <clears throat> Salem traffic was wild. It, uh, yeah. Yeah. Salem traffic is very wild. Oh my gosh. I've been sitting here this whole time stitching at one, stitching at a one uh, stitch length. Oh, I use that for FPP. I left. noticed. <laughs> change it to a two i just did i was like why is this taking so long oh because it's at amy if you haven't uh seen this already type exclamation amy in the chat uh oh uh day says oh never mind she's talking to somebody else dragonflies for donna says i drove to nara in dc because the metro wasn't close enough okay i don't know what that is Gosh, this goes so much faster now when you have the correct <laughs> stitch length. Oh yes, my goodness. that does happen. Yep, it does. Indubitably. Oopsie doopsies. So all I might get done in this live stream is cutting and pressing. That's okay. <laughs> That's all right. That's okay. My iPad is dying too. Everything's just dying. Well, Ouch. Uh, Ouch. can't help you with that. My laptop battery is draining quickly oh, and it's no. plugged in. So Not I don't again. understand that. Yeah. So I just turned the brightness on my laptop monitor down. Um, but yeah, it's, it's so weird how it does that. I don't yeah, understand. I don't understand either. I don't have a USB-C. So uh, go look in the drawer. Oh, here's one. This white one's a oh, USB-C. Hold on. Oh no, that goes there. The one hanging out right in that gray basket. I, it's not plugged into anything right now. White Perfect. cord. You can just borrow that. Who just dinged? Nope, nobody. You unplugged the USB, so. Oh. Dum 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 dum. Oh, I unplugged the wrong one. That's what happened. Dum 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 dum. 
That's why it was ding. Oh, you unplugged my phone. I did. <laughs> I did unplug your phone instead of the U into instead of the USB C. Whoopsies. <laughs> my bad. Oh, National Archives. Got it. I've never heard anybody called it National oh. N A R A. I've always heard just the archives. Trek says, I've been tidying up my sewing area during the stream. Way more fun while watching the stream. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Anything is more fun when you've got somebody to listen to and talk with and giggle at because it kind of takes your mind off that boring task that you might be doing. And yep. I feel like I just get more productive. Yep. I'll be honest with you. So if you guys don't know Laura Lynn from Mom and Pop Quilt Show, she does a quilt shop. shop. There you go. She has a YouTube channel. Exclamation M. PQS, I think is what it is in the chat. If you want to get a link to it, she does live streams on Tuesdays in the afternoon, which I will usually try to catch or at least listen to while I'm at work, just as background noise while I'm working. I'm not, I'm not usually very active in the chat when I do that. Cause I'm, I'm usually busy, but it's nice to have that voice going and just kind of listen in on Absolutely. something. The other thing that I'll do the other thing that I like is on Saturdays, I'm I feel like I'm never really home for this, but at Saturdays at one o'clock Eastern time, she does a live stream on her channel. And a couple of years ago, I remember uh, some of you guys had told me about her and they're like, oh, you got to check out Mama Pop Quilt Shop. You got to check out Mama Pop Quilt Shop. And so I was like, okay. And I kept trying to make a note of it. And one Saturday I did, I was like, okay, I'm going to go see what this is all about. I want to go see this channel one at one o'clock on a Saturday. So I tuned in and I think I was upstairs watching it like on my phone. And as I was watching her, just like sitting at her machine creating, it really got me excited to go sit at my machine and sew. I didn't want, I wasn't gonna sew the same thing that she was, but she inspired me and got me motivated to work on my own project. And I was like, oh, I get why people like the live streams yeah. now. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, definitely. Uh, Janet Johnson says, seems Ian is the guest that won't go home. <laughs> With a couple of laughing faces. Yep. And then Soap and Girl says, Ian's not a guest, he's family. Uh, Yorkie mom was asking if a bobbin would fit in that magnetic spot. It sure would. Oh, on the tray. That's a good idea. Yeah, that, I, actually, I was like, oh, that's a yeah, really that's good a idea. That's a really good idea. Especially since my bobbins are metallic. Yeah. Or metal. Sorry, not metallic. They're metal. I mean, aluminum. You're not. You're not wrong. It is metallic. So you are. You you are speaking correctly. You could probably put a couple bobbins in there. Probably could. I got one more to starch, and then I can press all these. Yay! Sorry if you see me wincing, everyone. I apologize. <laughs> Sitting just at the wrong angle. Oh, I love to sew. Says I found Laura Lynn through you. Awesome. Yay. I found Laura Lynn through you. <laughs> The viewers. <laughs> Fallon says, I think my tray is slightly different prototype than Becca's. Hers is likely our final one for that design. My bobbin sits in it, but not all the way in it. It's a little on top of it. Mm. Would you like me? Actually, you know yeah. what? I will. I'll get Good a shot. bobbin and I'll put it down in there and I'll show you what it looks like since nope. this is probably going to be the final design. I'll go to the overhead view so y'all can see. Overhead view, just like this. <laughs> okay. Flat Jenny. So, by the way, do you see these little things? These are homemade stilettos that a friend of mine made for me at a retreat. They're just made out of like really thick. This is like a tapestry pin or something. This was just like a, another pin or something. She glued the little charms on there. They're super cute. So, uh, thank you, Connie. You know who you are. Let me see. Bobbins. I'm going to pull the pins out. And set them over here carefully. Oh yeah. Do you hear that clunk, ka clunk, yeah, ka clunk? I do. Yeah, I can. Is fit. it hitting the magnet? Uh -huh. I mean, it's not hitting the magnet because there's wood, but like, is yeah. it the magnet? The magnet strong. Nice. I can fit four in there nicely, but if they were wound, it might be a little tight. I could definitely do three for sure. Definitely do three for sure. Fallon, another selling point. Yeah, that's really cool. I hadn't even thought about that. That's a great idea. So there you go. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is what happens on Friday nights. It's time to light the music. It's time to light the light. It's time. I have no idea why. Matt you're is very VR. You are right. That is so nice. I love it. Fallon, your husband is very talented. He absolutely is. I kind of wish that I could um, go check out their studio because their uh, their laser cutter. I used to use a laser cutter, and he's I inviting love it. himself to come stay at your house next. You're welcome, Fallon. I'll be there soon. Uh, I'll text you when he's arrived. Right. Don't worry. Uh, Sojo quilt stitches. Blah, 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 blah. Sojo quilty stitches stitchy things. Say that name five times fast. Sorry about that. Uh, says, hi, Ian. How are you after you fell down the stairs? I'm okay. I'm sore. Tailbone is sore. I don't know if I bruised it or sprained it, but it is sore. And there's nothing that I could do about it other than just take it easy. So that's what's happening. Hello, S. Taylor. She says, I am here. I have been lurking. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Amy, did you do exclamation Amy? Amy, Amy, Amy. Amy Demon, I'm talking to you. Did you do it? Did, did you do you it? Do the thing. Did, did you do you it? Do the thing. I'm just gonna keep asking until I see. Yes, I did it. <laughs> uh, Lynn says, "What kind of iron are you using, Becca? This is a Panasonic cordless iron, model number WL607. And if you go to my website, sobecca.com, up at the top of the page, there's a menu option for about, and that'll say my room. And when you click on that, it'll give you affiliate links to all of the items that I use in this room, including this exact model of iron, which you can find on Amazon. Speaking of iron. You're welcome, Amy. Should we tell them what we pre-ordered? You can tell them because you, I did not actually order. Oh, you did me. not? I thought you did. No, oh. because I really think, and I want the blue one because oh, okay. it matches my wall. Okay. Yes, but I'm yes, here. you can tell them and you can be all excited about I it too. Am, I am very excited because oh, I pre-ordered <laughs> got it, Amy. Uh, both of the Tulip Pink irons. He so did. the mini and the full size Aliso irons, I pre-ordered both So now those. he's going to have... Tulip pink irons to match his tulip pink machine. I am. I am. And while I thought they were very pretty and very bright, my heart really belongs with that blue one. That's totally fair. Totally fair. I just didn't realize that you, because she, yeah. she had been talking about to. ordering it. And then... I like the I like the bright pink yeah. and I like the fairy dust, but I like the blue better. That's fair. That's fair. Amy says I did earlier, but the chat went so fast. Yeah, that's okay. I saw. I'm glad. <laughs> Fallon says, fancy, Ian. Oh, I know. I'm going to charge this back up for a minute. It's so fancy. How much? I think the MSRP, do you remember what the MSRP on the big remember. one was? I don't Wasn't remember. Wasn't it like, what, was it 199 or I can't remember. I think it's like 212 maybe, 215? I don't remember. I don't remember well, I know. What, I, what I ordered I, it for, but I just knew I needed it. It was. Like, I think it's like. Yeah, maybe it was like two to two seventeen. It was an odd number. It was a yeah. couple dollars more than the normal one. Yeah, yeah. for the two of the pink edition. Exactly. Like two Hi, Bill. Away. Good to see you. Yeah, it's it's a little more expensive. Ooh, Aliso's having a Black Friday sale. Two twenty. There you go. Thank you. Thank Kate. you. Couldn't remember. He just went. I need it. I need it. There you it, go. it needs to find its way into my home. Mm -hmm. Into my home, indubitably. That's awesome. Elisa's having that Black Friday I sale. Know. Maybe I should have waited. <laughs> well, it's all right. I think you still got a better deal. I th yeah, I think I'll be all right. I think I'll be all right. And who knows if the Tula Pink edition will be included in that. Yeah, that's very true. They may not include that one. They're not even available in stores yet. They don't right. ship until February. Right. Do, do, do. Um, I want the mini and I don't need it. I just want it. Sarah, I'm with you. I didn't, I, I, Becca can tell you, I was like, do I get the mini? Do I not? He was. And she's like, whatever you feel like. And I jumped it and did it. He did. So. He did. Uh, Amy asks, do you like the Aliso irons? I'm not a fan. I do like them. I know a lot of people have strong feelings both for and against them. And that's perfectly fine. It's, it's the whole Android versus Apple debate, uh, in in that regards as well but i do like the aliso 
Becca, poor Becca, I've almost burned down her studio because I've forgotten to put the iron away because I walk off and just leave it there. <laughs> but I do like the Aliso irons because I can just let go when it raises up and I don't have to worry about it. I used to have an Aliso. I got one for Mother's Day the year I started sewing. It was pink, it was beautiful, and I had to have it. And I got it, and I loved that thing. But I wore that sucker out. It was not getting as hot as it used to. It started off that way. And then the auto lift feature started not working. Like it was tilted when it would raise. And so because it, when it raised, it felt like it, it read that it was tilted because mm. something was off. Mm -hmm. It constantly kept thinking that I had tilted it over. Or I had dropped it. So it kept shutting off. Oh, man. And I eventually just got to the point where I was like, okay, this iron's done. done. Like I, I did for a long time. I was like, okay, we're just going to use it without the auto tilt on. We'll just set it like a normal iron. Yeah. Right. And I did that, but then it started like it was getting even less hot. And I was like, all right, RIP. Yep. Um, bah, bah, something like that, whatever. A couple of things went by. Uh, Tula is not included in that, so totally understand that. Um, Janet says, I want the small iron, but can't get it here in Australia. Sorry to hear about that, because um, I'm kind of excited. Oh, for yeah, they're U.S. The only. Yeah. Um, let's see. I have to switch to the desktop. Welcome back, Soap and Girl. Uh, yeah. Oh, no. No. <laughs> Nomi, I said, uh, I thought you meant High School the Musical, like the high school musical, not the high school musical at your high school. I, Laura, that is what I'm having the problem with here at Becca's, is forgetting to put the regular iron back instead of just walking away. <laughs> Once you go to a Liso iron, you really can't go back to a normal one because you want to just leave it there. I uh, So I'm going to tell you all a secret. Are you ready for a secret? No secret gosh. time! Do um, I want to know the secret? So uh, my friend Heather from Crimson Tate, she came to do a... a uh, uh, she came to do a trunk show and teach uh, at my quilt guild. And she was teaching how to do the thing. And she has an Aliso iron. And she forgot that it was not an Aliso iron. And so she left the, the iron on the wool pressing mat. And it sure did leave that scorched iron print on it. And she's like, oh, my God, I feel horrible. Mm -hmm. It was fine. Everything was fine. But it was just kind of funny. She's like, oh, man, I totally forgot about it. And I now understand why she forgot about it. Because I've done it, too. <laughs> Dragonflies for Donna said, Becca, you need to do a short of stealing both of Ian's iron since he tried to steal the <laughs> That's funny. I'd have to go to Texas to steal the iron. Yeah. <laughs> Guess I'm coming to Texas. Yes. After I'm... February. <laughs> right. Yeah, don't come in February because you know we shut down for for ice and <laughs> the power turns off. The power turns Rinse. off in Texas and doesn't come back on. I couldn't find the link to your sewing equipment. It's uh, my room at the top of the page. You got to go to about. Linda, Becca, chain piece, chain sews all the time. Okay. Um, one, two, three, four. <clears throat> at the top, you go to about, and then you go, what do I use? And that opens a page that gives you the links to everything. And I will drop that in the chat for you. Thank you, Becca. And for those of you that are watching on the replay, it's sobecca.com slash my dash room if you just want to type it in. <laughs> Karen says, I recently bought an Aliso, but it was defective and I had to return it. It was constantly doing push-ups. <laughs> Just received the replacement, but haven't tried it yet. I hope that you find this one to work better. Uh, I do understand that sometimes, sometimes they don't work. But uh, yeah, I'm glad you got a replacement. Um, Linda was asking about, do I ever chain sew? And yes, yes. I do. But yeah. my version of chain sewing is different than most. So I can like right now I've just got a big pile and I'm just doing it this way because I want to. 
when I chain sew, I don't leave the pieces attached. And here's why, let me show you an example. I'll get some pieces lined up. Da, 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 da. I've kind of gone through this before, so this might be a repeat for some of you in the chat, but I'll show you what I mean. So if I take the time to line up all my pieces and I've got everything here ready to sew, I will definitely do something like this. I'll put it in and I'll start sewing. But then as I finish that one, instead of leaving the thread attached, I click the heel of my presser foot and it cuts the thread for me and then I start the next one. And that saves me from having to pick all that up and come over here and cut all the threads. While what ends up happening is this motion that I've just kind of gotten into where the machine's cutting the thread while I'm grabbing my next piece and I feel like that makes me efficient. So watch what happens. I cut and I'm getting the next one. And the next one pushes that one out of the way. I cut while I'm grabbing the next one. And that becomes, that becomes the way I chain piece. And then that way at the end of it, I have all my pieces already sewn together and they're cut. So they're good to go. They're good to go. Yep. But what's happening in this case is I'm sewing the white onto both sides of the gray. So I'm sewing one side, cutting, turning around, doing the other side. I could totally do all of them at once, but I'm also finger pressing. So I'm just oh, gosh, doing them all like they're, there could be a number of different ways to do this, but absolutely. at the end of the day, you just need two of the white sewn onto the gray, and that's what I'm focusing on. Uh, Becky says, Ian, are you sure you don't live in Georgia? Texas sounds like my state. I, yeah, except your state is connected to the national grid, and Texas is not connected <laughs> to the national grid. It is its own grid. <sighs> Gotta love that. that Welcome, was, Jacqueline. That was a hard winter that year uh what ha is happening ian i don't know what is happening am i coming through weird no you're good they're, the faces you're making that. oh i um i messed up i forgot to um put a uh separate i put i forgot to put this in between and so i had to st stitch rip and me and the stitch ripper are doing great <laughs> And Danelle says, dang, I have to get a machine like that. Uh, yes, I have a, an affiliate link for Juki Junkies if you're interested in getting one of the Juki machines or any accessory for any Juki. Or Juki in general. Yep. And by the way, the reason why I'm not chain sewing is because I'm using tone on tone fabric for the white and I'm having a hard time knowing which side is up. So I could, if I wanted to, I could take the time to go through and put everything right side together so I wouldn't have to guess. But I'm literally, every time I pick up a piece of white fabric, I have to figure out what side is yep. up. Yep. It's not, so it's taken me a couple of minutes to just be like, uh, what am I doing here? Yep. And I just feel like as I figure it out, I might as well just sew it together so I don't have to lose track of it later. Yeah. Soap and Girl says those rolling blackouts are fun, not. <laughs> yes, Soap and Girl, I remember you're in Houston, if I remember correctly. I hope I hope I remember that correctly. And yes, weren't those rolling blackouts fun? Uh, thankfully, I was not affected by them. I had power and water the entire time. Thankfully, very thankful, super thankful for all of that. Uh, but yeah, my some some of my friends and family did not have power for a while, and that was really. Really sucky. <laughs> Fallon says our power doesn't work in the winter. Then in the summer, they threaten to take the power away because because for some reason they can't figure out we want to use our air conditioner. <laughs> it seems like we the 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 explanation they gave in the winter was it was too cold and it wasn't used to those temperatures. And then in the summer, it was too hot and they weren't <laughs> used to those temperatures. So I'm like, I don't know at this point. But anyways, I digress. <laughs> oh, no. So, so fun. Creations lost all of her pool equipment that oh, no. winter. Oh, that was an expensive bill to replace. I bet. Would I wonder if home, like, would your home insurance cover something like that? I, I don't know because they may consider it like an act of God type situation and they, they may not want to cover it. Oh. So I, don't uh, know. I love to sew says use a small black light flashlight for tone on tones. 
that's a I might have to try that. Yep, it it does work. Okay. It does work. Ian can confirm. I can confirm because I have done it. I love tone on tone because it's just a little bit, but I hate working with it. That's it can hot. get hard. It can get, get really hard to figure out. Is it on this side? Is it on that side? Although I guess I should f just embrace it because if it's hard for me to tell when I'm working with the pieces, then maybe you can't tell on the finished quilt. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, oh, that don't sound good. Was that a thick seam? No. Oh, that doesn't sound right. I think it just went fast. Mm. Might have been just bouncing on the table. Uh, the water bottle bounced. Oh, hey, by the, the way, we got the insert for that table for that machine. Oh, no, sweet. it's for the Bernina. Never oh, mind. Okay. Never mind. You mean my Bernina? No, I mean no. Mary's Bernina. Oh, right. So, yeah, uses a black light. I will have to use it. I wonder if they, they sell black lights. I might have to buy I don't think them. they do, but Amazon does. And they what? sell them, of course, for cheap. Well, so. I think they should put it on their notion while somebody tell Brody. Fallon, add that to your them. list of things to sell. Black lights. There you go. <laughs> You're welcome. Business ideas for you. <laughs> Business ideas. Mm. <laughs> Where do you get a black flashlight? It is on Amazon. Amazon sells them. Um, you can definitely get them from Amazon. Why am I saying Amazon? How many times can I say Amazon? That's too many. 152. There you go. It's time to light the music. I cannot. It's time to light the music. I have no idea. Don't ask me. Okay. okay. Don't right. ask me. Looking for a binder to hold my sew sampler patterns. Any questions? Yes. Also on my website under <laughs> my room, I link to the binders that I use for my patterns. It's under organization. Teacups and Roses says, I bought a $20 iron from Walmart about four years ago, and it's still going. I figure I'll know. buy a fancy one when it breaks, if it ever does. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, the job of an iron is to get the fabric hot so you can reset the memory and get a nice flat seam. If you have a $20 iron that is doing that for you, then stick with it. You don't need a fancy iron. You don't need all the bells and whistles. Like you can, you, there are quilts that you can make that will be perfectly acceptable and perfectly functional without having to buy all the gadgets. That said, the gadgets are fun. <laughs> True. I love gadgets. So I am all about the notions. I am same. all about the gadgets. Yeah, same. Don't need them. Are they helpful? Sure. Are they required? No. Speaking of gadgets and stuff, uh, you put out a great video this week on how to do machine oh, binding. binding. Yes, I did. And it was very, very good using oh two gosh. different methods. That and... binding video, you guys, it was 31 minutes. Yeah. yeah it was a, it was a long video. Um, but I have heard from you all that you like the you like the vlog, so I am going to continue to do those. Just I'm not going to do them every week because if I do them every week, then I'm not going to be able to do the other videos that I want to do as well. So I'm going to scale back a little bit on that. Maybe do them every other week, once a month, something like that. I will still do podcast vlog style um, videos. They'll just be sprinkled in here and there, and I have a content calendar that's keeping all that straight for me. Well, the video that I released this week, I actually wanted to go up last week, but it took me a long time to get this video together. Yep. I was recording for days yep. and then editing for days and trying to make sure that I was covering everything. And the, the result is a binding video that I think covers everything that you need to know to bind your quilt by machine. Everything. Yep. So if you've been if you get confused on any of the steps, if you're 
messing up joining your seams, if you're having a hard time wrestling your quilt under, if you're not getting an uh, even distribution, like go check that video out. Please go check that video out. Please make my time worthwhile right. because that took a long time to make. <laughs> it did. I watched her make that video and there oh. were moments that I was literally, it's the funny thing about like framing things. I was just outside of the frame when she was recording some of those segments. Yeah. But I think she did such a great job putting that video together and it really Really, really highlights how to do machine binding and she's right you don't have to hand stitch the binding in order to enter a quilt show i had heard that so many times she's 100 percent correct i'd heard that a hundred times you have to hand stitch your binding on no you don't you can do it by machine and it will still win ribbons he does have one that has won ribbons that was bound by machine yep I do so indeed. i i think i i'm very proud of that video and i would love for it to do well so Watch it, share it, <laughs> save it, reference it again. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Fallon says, is the content calendar you use on Amazon, li on your Amazon list too? No, but I have been thinking about designing a PDF one and putting it on my website so that you could use it for whatever the case may be, like for a project for quilts or content calendar or whatever. Um, I've got some ideas. I'm not going to promise Oops. them just yet because they're just ideas and I'm still working on them. But soon, I will tell you the content calendar that I use is in software. It's in Jira. And I do have a video coming that's going to kind of show you how I use Jira. That, that's the one of the next ones that's coming up. It's in the month of December. Can't tell you the actual date yet because it depends on how long it's going to take to record. Um, but I have, it, I have it bulleted out. I want, I did put this in a weekly vlog, but I want to make a video dedicated for just this. I want to show how I organize my projects, whether it's a quilting video or a quilt. I want to show how I'm decomposing that big project down into small pieces, small checklists, the software that I'm using to do it. But I also want to give you some alternate methods that you can use to do the same thing. Um, and when I release that video, it'd be really nice if I could have a PDF that you could use to download and create your own checklist. So yep. you can just print it off when you're ready. Yep, absolutely. Um, Gab, Gabby, no, Gab. Gabby Har Sos? Uh, no, there's another one. Uh, hi, Miss Becca. Do you have every single sewing notion known to man? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. But sometimes I feel like I do. Yeah, yeah. Um, I will tell you, I used to get a lot of sewing subscription boxes. And because I was getting almost, it felt like all of them. I don't think it was, but it was a good number of them. My notions drawer runneth over and there were duplicates for sure. But this year I have scaled back my, uh, unbox my, I've scaled back my subscription boxes mm -hmm. and my unboxing videos, because to be completely frank with you, the videos don't perform the way they used to. It's, I know there are some people out there that still like to watch them, but that my, the videos that perform better for me are the ones where I'm teaching or I'm showcasing a technique or I'm doing a vlog or a live stream. And so be, I want to make videos that you guys want to watch and that I'm excited about making. If you're not watching it, I'm not going to make the video. So I've, I've kind of cut back on the unboxing videos because they're not performing well. So that means all to say all of that, the only subscription boxes that I get still are so sampler because I love that one. I usually get notions first to market with that one. And I like the fabric choice and I like their patterns and it's economical. It's only $30 a month plus or take a couple of bucks. And then ginger quilter, Natalie Pratt is kind enough to send me hers for free. And so when I get that one, I do like to showcase it every so often. Um, I do enjoy her box. I, I like that one too. So those are the only two I get. And because I'm only getting those, I'm not getting the plethora of notions anymore. Yep. Good word. Plethora. 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 Donna mm. says too many were doing unboxing videos. I don't watch them. Yep. Hello, Yvonne. Yep. I, 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 I mean, I wasn't, I, I didn't, I don't know. I'm trying to find the right words and I'm having a hard time finding the word. I, I wasn't ignorant to the fact that while I was also doing unboxing videos, 
more people were starting on their YouTube journey and they were starting the same way that I started by getting comfortable in front of the camera, doing unboxing videos and showing you what's inside. And I was just like, okay, well now you've got a hundred people opening, I don't same know, box. like the open gates box yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah. At some point it just becomes white noise, right? And I think it's it like, do you really want to see me open the same box that everybody else has opened already? I could spend my time making a different video that's unique and not the same thing that everybody else is doing. Yep. So that's where I want to go. And the binding video was awesome. And yes, and the binding video was awesome. So I have heard time and time again, Katie told me this when mm -hmm. I, she interviewed me for her channel. And that was one of the things that she shared with me is that Pete and you guys have told me this. You want to see me do more teaching videos. You liked my teaching style. You like when I give instructional type videos, but I couldn't do those and do the unboxing mm -hmm. videos and do the live videos and do the vlog. I had to let some things drop so that I could get things organized and lean into that type of content. So I'm trying to, this is me pivoting in the direction that you're asking me to go. It's me. Hi, Hi. It's I'm me. the problem, it's me. Yeah, definitely I'm the problem. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Yes, yeah, so VR says, Becca, I understand that and I'm sure the expense of getting those boxes can be quite expensive as well. They can, it can be. Um, and then like not even just take the expense off the table because maybe you negotiate some way to get it at cost or free or whatever. Just take the cost off the table. What am I going to do with all mm -hmm. this stuff? Because I cannot sew those projects fast enough. Right. And so a lot of the times they were coming in, I would unbox it and then they go right out the door in a giveaway. Yep. And it's not because I didn't like it or I didn't think it was had the value. It's just because I didn't have the time mm -hmm. and I, I felt overwhelmed. So... I can understand that. But it was um, great because I was giving free stuff away. Right. Uh, Dragonflies for Donna asks, Becca and Ian, did you, do you ever have to de-stash or reorganize? Or I can't talk tonight. Wow. Yep. yep. Yes, absolutely. Yes. I mm -hmm. definitely have. In fact, I need to do a reorganize slash de-stash. I have a full big bin of fabric that is like Joanne's quality, which isn't bad quality. I just, I, there are some fabrics in there that I will probably never use and I mm -hmm. need to go through them because they were fabrics that I bought at the beginning of my quilting journey. Yep. I need to go through and organize it and clean it up and get rid of the fabrics that I'm not going to use to make room for the fabrics that I do have. I literally, I kid you not guys, I have a full shelf in my closet of tulip pink fabric that is like my sacred fabric um and i need to make room to put that with the rest of the fabric yep i've done i do that periodically so i don't reorganize well actually no i do no you do i do you i do, do it a lot mm -hmm. and i do it with mary's help because yes. she loves doing it too so yeah. We get, I mean, we did it this past Saturday. She came yep. over, Ian was gone and we were like, okay, let's reorganize some things. Yep. And we just got, went through and do it. But I find that I, I don't like, I don't like keeping things if I know I'm never going to use it. And just because I bought it doesn't mean I'm necessarily going to use it. So I periodically, I'd say probably every six months, may, at least once a year, but maybe a couple times a year, I will go through and I will start culling stuff that I know I don't want. And I'll put it in giveaways or I'll do a de-stash sale and earn some money from it. And the reason why I do that, if I'm being completely honest with you, is because I do like to buy fabric and I do like to buy notions and I have a finite amount of space. So I, I also know that in order for me to feel creative in here, I need to have a certain amount of organization and tidiness. I can create with a little bit of chaos, but there is a point where the chaos is too much on my brain and I can't do anything. And I have to reset the room so that I can create and make a mess and then reset the room again. It becomes a whole cycle for me. Yep. So I... I am aware of how much I have and that drives how much I allow myself to buy. 2023 for me, I actually just got an email from somebody asking me why I haven't been on. So yeah, I do actually lurk in their chat sometimes. I just haven't been commenting. I've not bought a lot of fabric this year. I think the only time I really bought fabric was on that road trip on the way back. And I think there was maybe one time that I bought a yard of fabric or something with Ian. Yep. But my... 
I've not spent a lot of money on fabric this year. It's only been a handful of times because I've got so much, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I'm not going to get through all of it. So yep. it's really tempting to buy from so yeah though i'll be honest because their prices are so good like i can't my quilt shop does not sell for their prices so uh donna hoffler asked if you had a binding video on your channel yes go check it out it's excuse me it's really really good so donna hoffler yes go check out her brand new video just came out on wednesday yep had to think on that came out on wednesday yep and ian to close the loop on that going back to the binding video the second technique that i talked about but didn't really demonstrate because i was already at 30 minutes of video <laughs> right uh is the method that ian uses and essentially it's just reverse of what i do so mm -hmm. i walked you through everything that i do and then talked about his and the plan is once he's returned home and has his equipment he's going to bind a quilt and he's going to make a video on his binding method yep. so once that's there i'll definitely put it out we'll put it in the facebook group and i'll link to it in my binding video as yep, well yep, yep. so kind of like a little binding collab yep definitely welcome back tiffany good to see you again hey tiff tiff she said she's pooped. Mm -hmm. How do you keep track of what you paid for fabric? I don't. I don't. I, it's not worth it. What, what purpose would I need? Like for what purpose would I need that information? If I like, I just approximate, right? If it's an older fabric and I've had it for a while, then I get, I estimate that I paid 10 or $11 a yard for it. And if it's something newer, then I estimate that I paid about $15 a yard for it. But I don't sell my quilts. I don't sell anything really. And I, if I'm reselling, it's a D stash and I'm not trying to price it at what I paid for because it's a D stash and I know I'm not going to get that. Mm -hmm. So I just don't. I could, I could get very obsessive about that very quickly sure. though. I could have Excel spreadsheets all day long. <laughs> I recently saw a, um, I think it was probably on Facebook. So it's probably a fake website or whatever, but it's like masking tape or washi tape type oh, yeah. stuff. And they, um, it has little places that you can fill out like the fabric name, the fabric line, where you bought it, how much it is, what the mm. thing is. And I'm like, oh, that's an interesting idea. I would never use it because I, I, I buy Tula Pink only. No, just kidding. Um, but yeah, uh, someone asked if my Tula Pink is insured. It is not. <laughs> I probably should put it on my insurance. It reminds me of the Brad Paisley song. He talks about how he bought a box of cigars and yeah. he couldn't really afford it so he got insurance on it yeah. and then he lit them up and then filed a claim for arson <laughs> you insure your fabric and then you cut them up and file the claim right yes <laughs> that would be funny no i'm i'm sorry like i feel like we just went down a total tangent um yeah yeah i, I my yeah i don't know i don't know don't. Uh, stick around Go Stick ahead. around for the beginning of the year, January timeframe. I've got a video on how my D-stash process works. I have this thing that I call, um, I've mentioned it a couple times in my weekly videos. It's quilt bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it's the point where I just estimate, okay, I, I basically, I go through this process where I have to determine, am I going to finish this quilt Am I going to ever start the quilt, right? Like, is this something that I'm going to do? Do I have the time? Do I have the money? Do I have the desire to finish it? And if those three things are no, then I let it move on to somebody else, whether it's a D stash sale or else. And that applies to your fabric too. Is this That's... something I'm going to use? Is, is it being, you know what I mean? That's such a great way to think about it. If, uh, uh, quilt bankruptcy. bankruptcy is such a good thing for just not like you get so overwhelmed that you're just like, I don't know what to do. And I don't know, like, what project should I start first? Or like, what, what do I need to do? And sometimes just calling bankruptcy helps yeah. kind of remove those roadblocks from you and allows you to free up your, your mind, your space, your time, all of the things. And yep. so I, I like, I like, did this come unthreaded? No. Okay. 
Uh, I think that's a good idea sometimes. Even if it's hard to do, I think it's a good thing to do sometimes. Well, I think we all come from that waste not, want not, yep. Want yep. not era, right? Yep. Where mm -hmm. we spent money, and mm -hmm. let's be honest, it's not a little bit of money. We spent a good bit of money for the fabric and the supplies that we have. Exactly. And so if we cut into the fabric and we start using it and then we get halfway through and we decide, you know what, I cannot, I just cannot, I don't like it anymore. You put it on the shelf behind you and it's hanging over your head. Yep. And at some point, you know, at some point, you know, you're never going to finish that project. Just because you spent money on it and started the project doesn't mean that if you're not gonna finish it, you have to throw it out declaring quilt bankruptcy doesn't mean you're throwing it out. You can sell that started project in a D stash or gift it to another quilter Absolutely. and let them finish it. Heck, I did that with my bliss quilt and it, I'm pointing to it because it's hanging on my wall in my studio. It was returned to me, finished, and now proudly displays. That was a quilt that I pulled bankruptcy on and paid forward to another quilter free of charge just to get it from hanging over my head and to allow the quilt to finally be finished. And she returned it to me once it was done. And I did not expect that. But that's like, how cool would that be if you called quilt bankruptcy and you gave your project to somebody in your guild and then they surprised you with a finished quilt? I, maybe there's a quilty friend that you have. Maybe they don't live in your area. Maybe the two of you can declare quilt bankruptcy together and you can swap projects. You finish theirs and they finish yours. Yep. Wouldn't that be great? That would be Get fun. more quilts finished doesn't mean you have to throw it out but i do i think we have such a hard time letting go of it because we spent money on it oh that's such a good amy has um amy has her her husband always tells her the money is already gone don't double down on a bad idea that's such a great i amy i am I'm stealing that from your husband. Yep. Thanks for thanks for yep. putting that in the chat. That is a wonderful uh, yep. phrase. Love that. Don't double down on a bad idea. Love it. Yep. Love it, love it. Uh, Donna said, I've watched So Yeah for two years and I've never bought a single thing. <laughs> I've bought from them. I haven't bought anything recently, but again, it's not because I have anything against So Yeah. I'm just not buying fabric right now. Yep. I, and I honestly, I feel like I've talked about this with people offline, but I haven't really mentioned it online. Maybe I have. I don't know. I say so many words. I don't know what I said and where I said it. But the, the truth is, I feel like when I got finally into the studio, which hasn't even been two years. Yep. Right. When I finally got into the studio and I got to open those boxes after all my fabric was packed away for months I was overwhelmed at how much I had, mm -hmm. right? And I just wanted to use that fabric. I did buy more stuff and I added to it, but having it out on the shelves where I can see it and color coded so I know how much aqua I have, I mm -hmm. know how much coral I have, makes a huge difference. So now what's happening is when I watch So Yeah or I go into a quilt shop, I'm like, I got enough aqua. I don't need more aqua because that's exactly what I'm going to go buy. Yep. That's what I used to keep buying over and over and over again was the aqua or the coral or the... So it, it's it's a it's a whole thing. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, it. I'm trying to use more of my stash. Absolutely. I need to use more of my Tula. Although it's hard to cut into the Tula sometimes. But I need to I need to work on cuz I have a couple I have several projects that I need to work on at home. I have a queue of projects. We all have a queue. Mm -hmm. Who who am I pretending like I'm the only one? We all have queues yeah. of projects that we need to work on and want to work on. And there's just not enough hours in the day or days in the week. Amy says, I really sew mostly with scraps. They keep showing up, so I haven't bought fabric in a long time. I saw your post on social media. You're like, when you tell people you love scraps, and <laughs> they keep showing up. Hey, you said, I love scraps. And there's a lot of people out there that are like, okay, I can make that happen for we you. can make more scraps for you. I'm, I'm just waiting for it to be like, okay, I have enough scraps. I got enough scraps. <laughs> I'm waiting for that to happen. Yeah. Uh, oh, my gosh. Um... I've started taking those odd fabrics and die cutting them into Ooh. big squares and then sewing them into charity quilts when I just need to sew but not think too hard. 
Even a homely quilt keeps you warm. That is absolutely true. Mm -hmm. Susan says, I was given a kit that I knew I would never make using the fabric with additional fabrics from my Autumn Wonders quilt and put the pattern on the giveaway table at my guild meeting. I know several guild meetings that have like a, a swap table where you can go in and drop off whatever you want to yep. give away That's and pick up whatever you want to pick up, which by the way, I'm super excited to go to your meeting, by the way. <laughs> uh, it's Monday night. I know, it's so exciting. Yep. Um, I, <laughs> Valen says, I just haven't bought fabric because I'm in small business bankruptcy. <laughs> by the way, I feel like I, I really didn't see a lot of the chat while I was talking about how I'm not buying fabric right now and I just want to make sure that I didn't alienate or offend anybody. Like, I don't know if anybody was like, stop talking. So I'm off my soapbox, but I hope oh, I didn't fine. alienate anybody or upset anyone because that was not meant to be confrontational. And I feel like it's a controversial topic. I, maybe it's not. Maybe it's just in my head. I don't know why I think that. Ah, stop. Sorry, not you. <laughs> the machine. I'm talking to the machine. It was doing... And yeah, we won't talk organizational about that. Organizational video is coming in January, Katie. So that's why we need Becca's organization chart. Yep. Coming in December. Stay tuned. Or I'm sorry, January. Stay tuned. And I may even be doing a little collab with a couple of content creators, challenging them to declare bankruptcy on some of the things that they have in their room. Hint, hint. You know who you are. <laughs> I don't, I don't know who it is, so... It's not him. <laughs> it's not me. It's not me. Why am I doing the circus song? I don't know. I have no idea. Why am I over here singing the Muppet song all night? I don't know. It's because you get a song stuck in your head and you pass it on to your audience. You're I guess welcome. So. I get, you're worms. welcome. You're worms. It's going to be so weird when you leave. I know. This is going to be my live stream. <laughs> I'm not going to know how to have a conversation. You're going to you're going to be like looking at the camera going, what do I say next? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I know. Same for me when I get home and I'm going to be going live on Sunday and I'm going to be like, what? But I don't. What, what do any, I do? What do I what, how do, do I do this? I'm just going to get an audio track of crickets and just play it in the background. <laughs> Because <laughs> I feel like that's going to be what it's such a hard thing. Like what you're experiencing now is just like the two of us having a conversation mm -hmm. with you, mm -hmm. right? Like we're riffing off of one another, yep. but when there's nobody else in the room, you don't know if your joke is falling, right? right. You don't know how things are hitting. Yeah. And it's, and you got that delayed re feedback. So you're like, oh, did I just say something that's going to cause right. everybody to turn off? And then 30 seconds later, you're like, ha ha ha. You're like, oh, oh shoot, okay, that good. didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it'll it'll definitely. And it's nicer having like when you can't look down at the chat, it's nice to have somebody else read the chat for the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, uh Tiffany, we can we can talk about this cuz Tiffany and I have already decided we're going to do this. So I will go ahead and announce it and we'll just double down on it over the next couple of months. We're giving you lots of warning on this. I feel like I have spent the past Oops. few weeks sewing a lot with Ian and I will still be sewing with him for a bit of time to be determined. Yep. Um, but I want to spend some time sewing with Tiffany because I haven't done that in a while. Yep. So Tiffany and I are planning a special collab. We're going to do a live stream together on Martin Luther King Day at 12 o'clock noon Eastern time. It'll be 10 o'clock Arizona time, 9 o'clock a.m. Uh, West Coast time. We're going to put together the Elizabeth Hartman unicorn pattern. And we might just do one block. We might turn it into a whole quilt. Might just be a pillow. Don't know. But that's what we're going to work on. And so all those details are going to be rolling out over the next few weeks. I'll give you a link to the pattern. She'll be giving you a link to the pattern. Both of ours will be affiliate links. So feel free to use whichever one you'd like. Um, but yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to start curating our fabric. And we're going to sew that together on a live stream. Mm -hmm. I think that'll be a lot of fun. That will be. Uh, both Janet Johnson and MJ Sews. Janet said, you need to pin up Ian in front of you. And then uh, MJ Sews says, you need a flat Ian to keep you company when he leaves. 
I you think know, that's great. What, you know what's really funny is your um, your UPS store nearby. They, I haven't been in a UPS store for a while, but they have a like printer that prints onto things like wood wood pieces and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, oh, that's kind of awesome. It can print on just about anything. Yeah. Yep. 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 Flat. Flat. Ian coming mm -hmm. your way. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. You oh know what time goodness. it is? Oh, like 10 o'clock. I know. Every time. Every time. I was actually just looking up at the at the clock a Isn't couple of minutes ago. And I, I was like, oh my gosh, it's 947. When did, and I even had opened Facebook. So I was going to do so and tell and share everybody what you guys have been working on. But I feel like the two of us just start. To, and this is how it is with Tiffany too, yep. right? Mm -hmm. Like there's just there's a natural flow to those conversations it's not you we're not talking over top of each other yep. we're not interrupting each other we're not try neither one of us is trying to be the bigger it's just easy mm -hmm. exactly exactly so i just looked up and it was 10 o'clock and i'm like when did this happen when did that happen we were literally I was literally over at that table at seven o'clock and here it is 10 o'clock. What happened? I know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know Amy says, I am excited and terrified to be live with Danelle next weekend because I never know what stupid crap is going to fly out of my mouth. <laughs> I edit my videos, but live yikes. <laughs> yeah, it can be intimidating for sure. Yep. Yep. I like your block back. I have a lot of Christmas fabric. I think I will use it really, really easy. All the details for how to make this block are in the description box below. Truthfully, I wanted to make this into a pattern, but I don't know that that's going to happen. So like, especially before Christmas, um, I just don't honestly know that I have the time. So grab the details that are in the description box, super easy to do. And <laughs> if you go back to last week's video, I give you a video tutorial walking you through all of it and the details for air in that one too fallon's real funny right now because she's like you have time it's only nine. Oh well <laughs> nine your time i mean i could keep going but i also know that donna starts a live stream at 9 30 and i try to be respectful of that I, yep. we overlap that's okay yep. but i try not to be like hog the airway right right, right. <laughs> like i don't i mean I, I i could sit here and talk for another hour we could we could it, it's funny because also like when i go live I'm like, oh, two hours is so <laughs> long because I'm by myself. I'm literally sitting there just like you, just sitting there reading comments and stuff like that. And I feel like I feel tired of my own voice after those two hours because I'm reading out all the comments and there's no dialogue back and forth. So it's nice when when we do have that. Jackie, Jackie, you're getting really funny here. Jackie <laughs> says it's only 8 p.m. here. Show and tell, Ian. How is it going? Show and tell. Um, so why don't you bring it over here so okay. they can get more shots? So yeah. I'll put it on the single camera. I'll bring it. I'll bring it this woo as I knock things over. Uh, it's going pretty well, I think. I made a couple rows. Let me of, get out of the way. Of of things. I need to stretch anyway. Oh, she's got to stretch. I'm going to come over here and sit in the big chair. Um, so it's coming pretty well. It's. I love how it's looking so far. I've got my first couple of rows put together. And it's just going to keep oh, building and oh, 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 hi. Well, but it's not. Us. I know. I know. Um, <laughs> I so mean. I have I have one, two, three, four, five rows. I have five rows done for it. Um, so we have the like blue and then it goes into the greens and then we go into the yellows and then we go into the oranges and then we go into the reds and pinks. So it's coming along. Well, that does look good. It does. It does look Did good. Did you show them how the motion's going to be when you put the rows together? I haven't. I, Here, hold on. I got an idea. She's, she's I'll pull out something. the design board. Oh, okay, cool. And you can just kind of show them really quick. Because I think... Get back. <laughs> Get back, foul beast. Get back, bah. Okay, here. All right. Let me throw these You'll down. have to move the chair out of the way. That's all right. I can but you that. can kind of put, them up, put it up there. Put them up. Put them up. I'll pull this over here. Oh, your tailbone cracked. No, that was my foot. Oh. That was my foot that popped. Oh, but I love but... it when a foot pops. Yeah, I the foot is better than the tailbone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's see here. Oops, it's going to be a little longer than the board. Ooh, stay. Stay. Everybody gets a good shot of my butt. You're welcome. His you butt is broken. There's welcome. a crack in it. Do it's, you want a couple of pins? It's, it's just too long. <laughs> Well, but it, you only need to show the middle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, that's true. 
Yeah, there we go. All right. And then I'll grab the next row. Whoops. Grab the next row. And so my next row is going to go like, ah! Put a pin in it. Isn't that corporate speak? <laughs> we'll put it in the parking put lot. It, put it in the parking lot. There you go. Okay, Take this one. Go. Are you going to put sashing in yeah, between? Yeah, I'm going to put a sashing in between like this, as well. Like right? Yeah, uh-huh. So it'll look like this whenever it's done. And I'm going to grab a pin as well. Do, do, do. Uh, so yeah, it's going to look something like this when it's... And there will be a sashing of this multicolor that goes in between, but my my uh, four patches are going alternate of each other on each row. So it looks something like that. How's that? That, that, that? Yep, Joan says it's been great tonight. Love both of you. Love both of you, like each of you separately, but a lot better together. Oh. Maybe you can do a Zoom once in a while. That's oh, a great sure. idea. For sure. We Love the PJs, will. Ian. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you and my beautiful PJs. Let's welcome. see. I can read the comments from over here. There you go. Looks good, Ian. Love Ian and Becca together. I'm going to be obnoxious with what? all the power you've given me, Becca. Oh, because I did. I, I gave her explanation, Amy. Oh. <laughs> what, is, what does that do? Uh, she has a command that... Now it drops a link to her channel. Oh, gotcha. Joyce Hernandez says, good night, friends. Good night. Uh, show and, uh, we got that. <laughs> good night, everyone. Thanks night. for keeping me company, everyone. My grandson would love that because he's totally into Minecraft. Oh, yeah. And it totally yeah. looks like that type of a pattern. It's really cool. It does. Uh, I didn't even looks think good, that. Ian. Yep. Ooh, ah. <laughs> Tiffany said, it will be great, Ian. Thank Randy you. says, I love the quilt layout, Ian. Yeah, so that's what we're. Whoops, that's, that's what we're kind of working with. Woo! Da 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 da. Well, you You're welcome. Do, oh, you can't see. You, no, you can't. I'm. I'm too. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I still thought it was funny when we did the cotton cut. You guys got to go watch. Go watch the replay of the cotton cuts live reveal on YouTube. Yeah. Because they had Ian and I on showcasing our quilt yep. at the end of the video. There you go. And we changed the angle of the camera. You can't see us now. We're just, we're like the talking heads. <laughs> but we changed the angle of the camera to get the whole length or height of the bookshelves because we needed to show these massive quilts. <laughs> and it was funny because when we did that, I was like, come, come over here. Like, I, I didn't realize, like, <laughs> like, look, look at this. Hello. Hi. Like, I, you can almost see my face, but you still can't see Ian. And I didn't realize how short I was compared to him until I saw it on camera. And then yeah. with the height of the bookshelves behind me, it was just comical to yeah, me. Yeah, it was pretty. So you have to go, if you want to see, like, oh, God. And every time you sit in this chair, you put it all the way down. I, I do. Can, I, I do. can tell when he's been yeah. like, Ian's been here. I got to raise do. it up. So anyway. Okay, friends. I think that's it for tonight. I'm going to drop a link for Donna's live stream because mm -hmm. she is live tonight and I'm I'm going to keep sewing because tomorrow's Saturday and I can. So we're going to keep, oh, MJ So says nice colors, Ian. So we'll put Thank that you. link in there. I'll probably pop over and listen to her live stream for a bit. And I know she would appreciate it if you guys popped in too. Don't forget Sean is live tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. And then Ian, <laughs> Tiffany, and I don't know if Teresa is doing lives. I know she had some stuff come up and yeah. she's had to change her schedule around yeah, a bit but i'm not sure um if she does go live it will be sunday maybe saturday i don't know uh handmade by ying with donna oh and mom and pop quilt shop is live tomorrow too who else yep. is live tomorrow uh fallon oh Fal fallon. fallon yeah fallon, fallon is fallon's, fallon's doing a tomorrow. live mm -hmm. yep. yep yeah yep. that's right fallon's live tomorrow uh mom and pop Sunday, me, possibly Teresa, and of did course we, Did somebody say Danelle does lives on Saturdays now? I don't know. I have no idea. It's hard, I, like, I can't keep, I don't have a list. Yeah. I don't have a list. So it is what it is. I'm literally trying to get into the chat to give you guys the link. Sorry. Hold on, everyone. <laughs> One moment for favors. Yep. Fallon's going live after Sean tomorrow. Perfect. And Sean usually wraps up about 930 Eastern time. So once he's done 
and maybe he'll dump everybody over to Fallon mm -hmm. and then we'll go from there. So that'd be great. You got a weekend full of content. Weekend full of content. You don't have to sew alone. It means I have to actually get my stuff ready for Sunday. <laughs> you don't Oops. have to sew home. You don't have to, you don't have to you sew have home. You don't have to sew home? I don't know. <laughs> you don't have to sew home, but you can't stay here because we're going to Donna's. That's, that's what I was trying to say. I love it. So let me get you guys the link. That's what I was trying to do is click into the chat again because I lost the chat <laughs> and I want to put the link in there for you because we about to peace out, homie chickens. Oh, oh wow. That's really, I, I love it when, there we go. <laughs> totally spammed. Bye, everyone. <laughs> See you next Friday. <laughs> Bye. See you, everyone. <laughs>